All right, here we go. Dolphins are the Illuminati. I, I know. I am aware. I've been enlightened into Posadism. Let me join the call. Uh, we'll first have to put this on. Wait. 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 Okay. White people are being smoked, and you have to interpret rules out of this happening randomly. Okay, so. mm, wow. Yeah, nothing like uh, clear and non-arbitrarily applied rules and guidelines, right? Especially like for that, people actually. who, like, Especially, depend um, on this for their income. Sure, but also um, neurotypical individuals who happen to have a fixation on making sure they understand the rules of all spaces they're in. Um, it's it's actually really, really not great to not know what the rules are. The space are it can yeah. cause me like True. extreme True. emotional clone. distress. Yeah, and, yeah, it's it's not great that this is the space that Twitch builds. Well, I mean, it's good that we actually have people. You know what I mean? That everybody can kind of relate. Like the worst thing mm -hmm. is to have some something like this going on, and to just like not really have anyone to talk to yes, about it. Like that nobody that you're going the, through something that no one's ever mm -hmm. dealt with before, we're and then you're then you're really in and no. No person's land. The be like that. I don't know. No, I guess. Okay. I'm, all right. So uh, just just to get just to get a, a little uh, just get a little wiggly. I kind of like the idea that a fucking uh, that rules or whatever can be kind of can be a little more fluid, especially mm -hmm. on online platforms. That's what happens because uh, there's so many like stuff evolves so much that anytime you make True. a rule. There's gonna be another way to circumvent it, right? Just like you know, it was like against the rules to go in someone's yeah. chat and type out the N word. So now mm -hmm. people do K I N E E G U R, right? Instead, so like there needs to be like your rules, like if you, that, that if you, want, if you want them to be fixed, sense. if you want them to be fixed, like you have to basically create a whole department dedicated to just updating the rules constantly. Kind of like a yeah. spirit of a law versus. The letter. Letter. Yeah. versus the letter of the law and that's why i think there should be like a dual system where there is a plain language spirit of the law rule written out and then additionally very specific legal framework of like what the exact requirements of the rule Test. are at the moment okay. given precedent and then say look we're going to follow the spirit of the law and at some point we will change precedent right we will say this has become ban worthy add it to the details of the rule and then like having this third system i think should give lots of like far 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 more nuance to everything mm. so if I'm a little uh, lost, it's okay. i heard alan watts lecture one time talk about yes. writing down the law is one of the worst things that we could possibly do because when you write it down it means that people can look at it interpret it and pick it apart and so one of one of the suggestions is to instill, like like we said before, the spirit of the law. And based on that kind of general guideline, we can then case by case approach it with a little more wisdom rather than getting caught up in the 50 other exceptions that we've mm. built a history of I think... to apply to yet another exception. Hmm. I'm going to have to, like, I mean, like, like you're speaking my language. Like, I, I'm, I, I like to leave things loose. I'm not a big... Mm -hmm fan of like super you know set in stone rules i'm not a fan of like not being able to sort of adapt um you know as as you learn more um but yeah i, I share uh the frustration that everybody's talking about <laughs> for the purposes of future planning i definitely do prefer very hard boundaries um even if the boundaries themselves are amorphous like let's say you're in a polyamorous relationship or something. And it's like, I don't care if you date other people. I have, you know, blah, 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 expectation of you if you do that. Um, so like the, the boundaries themselves don't have to be like, uh, you know, it uh, is cursed. Imperious and like, Very whatever. Nice. but I, for the purpose, especially of like business planning, like if I am going to invest time and money in something, I want to know, uh, exactly what the boundaries that I'm operating are within or that it's explicitly a gray space, you know, because there are like gray markets, like especially in the United States where there's not a whole lot of legislation that like covers and regulates them. And it's like a, it's like that Dave Chappelle skit when people are going to the internet 
and they're just like running into buildings and just like the stores just like grabbing Riley, shit Riley. off the walls and like running out. Like <laughs> if you're trying to play like fast and loose, then like Chef's Kiss, it's all there. But like personally, I'm in I'm in it for that like slow burn, long con. Like let's let's develop organically over time. Coggers, that's my, what my brain is doing right now. I feel like that's a, um, that's a good way to start. And uh, you you mentioned something about like the uh, an open uh, polyamorous re- relationship or a closed polyamorous relationship. And when we talk about the law, uh, oftentimes we think of the law applauding or applauding applying broadly. Um, but not necessarily on an individual case by case level. So uh, I think where we run into uh, run into problems is, you know, let's say that, you know, this that you have you have set up a closed polyamory group. And you're like, okay, the this this system works for us. I think the the problem runs into is when you start expecting other people to adhere to those same types of rules of engagement. When when you when you expect everyone else to, f- to fit that one design cookie cutter type idea, and and that's also why I I kind of lean back on uh, the story of writing down the law is probably one of the one of the worst things that, that we could do because if I if we write down the law going to be like okay closed polyamory groups should be this because it worked for me, it may not necessarily work for another group. It might not necessarily work for even two people. So. Uh, looking at it broad, broad scale, and then uh, using kind of wisdom and understanding on the on the individual level, uh, I this think is the balancing just, point. Well, I'll I mean, you can't wait. Oh, sorry, wait, go on. You don't mean that, like, I, I'm sorry, I jumped in here because I was just trying to keep track of when everyone was starting, but also keep my stream going and whatever. But mm-hmm. what, do you, do you mean literally never writing down the law, or is this more of like a like, or, or are you being loose with those definitions as well? Because um, not writing down the law would be pretty disastrous, in my opinion. Um, for it, a it'd be like system. it'd be like anarchy, isn't it? Um, no. <laughs> well, no, no, so, I'm, so, no I'm, not really, I'm actually. It would, it well, would have I'm, to actually be, like, real anarchy, not chaos. But, like, exactly. there would have to be anarchy as in everyone would have to be an expert in what the rules of society are and would have to stay updated on this and, constantly. And that uh, wouldn't be a good thing because our system, as it exists now, can't support people having to pay attention to that constant renegotiation of what the laws are. I don't think that's what I, 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 I mean, now I'm not like a, like a, like a theory God or anything, but I, I'm pretty sure that, uh, I don't know, demon mama. You're not, a rap, you're not a rap God. I'm not, a. am beginning to feel like a rap God, rap God. Yeah, no. Um, but, uh, no, like, uh, I'm no theory god here, but um, but I, I really don't think that like writing down the law has anything really to do with the concepts of anarchy. That, like like, um, I don't believe like, I, I don't know. This this seems like we're going a little broad. Like literally never writing down the law. That sounds like um, yeah, like incredibly yeah, 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 yeah. like 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 not only counteractive to to a like a functioning society but also counteractive to like posterity like how the hell are you supposed to learn anything if you can't write it down like writing rec- record keeping is fundamental to humanity yeah. like we certainly yeah yeah so i don't certainly. i just don't really agree with the idea that like that like writing down the law like there are ways to communicate ideas mm-hmm. that you've written down in a way that says like hey like, I mean, for example, you could write a law that says, you know, um, you know, this law, let's say, for example, this law, Twitch law, uh, we're writing a law for Twitch. You can't say slurs in chat. Here are the slurs that we know. Um, and we may amend this list in the future. Um, and that could be a just law that says, hey, like these slurs completely disrupt this space and make it unusable for anyone. Um, and, but we recognize what, 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 that. New slurs what would be more useful with this law is to also have like attached to it a law that says if you attempt to violate the spirit of this rule that will be equally bannable and at when this happens we oh, will yeah. show what has broken the spirit and or why. or even right. better you could say like yeah well absolutely i would agree with that like i think it's just for you to say like um i mean if we're talking just about twitch like i don't know like i jumped in again so i don't know exactly the full parameters of what we're talking about here but if we're so talking about specific- there's, there's um a new twitch tos enforcement wave coming down apparently that's where we started 
Oh, mainly okay. on the mainly on the partners. We're talking about the DMCA yep. thing. Uh, Demon. Oh Mama, yeah. yeah. Non gaming yeah. channels banned. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> Listen. If I, now if that I I've could, got my website, that, I'm fine. That's so interesting. I know you are. You're you're have on they, with, uh, like like Xander Hall and Vosh and all those that are safe from oh, all the I'm demonmama.com. Yeah, that's right. Demonmama.com forward slash live. Come hang out. <laughs> so, uh, not not to not to rewind it back a little bit, but. I made the, the anarchy crack mostly as a joke because people okay, have okay. kind of two views of anarchy. Either it's what they what they see on conservative media Aww. or it's the idea that I like, the laws I like, aren't necessary. Your, your and this is kind of where I'm more lean to is, is because we have an ethical basis for our culture and society that in, that enforces the, the law as we know it um, without having to write it down. If, if we have an ethical society... That is that is able to, and we're not going we're not going to get there uh, anytime soon with how our current system works by a long shot. So this is this is one of those this is one of those dreams. But ultimately, if you have an ethical society that has empathy and understanding for other people and how we should be treating one another, then laws kind of become a moot point. So, well, Ouija, the one thing I wanted to say before to your comment about boundaries is that mm -hmm. boundaries are not meant for other people they are meant for you yeah, yeah. Uh, so you determine I don't understand your entirely own either, but i'm gonna do my Sound best like this is what i'm comfortable do my best with. So if somebody else says hey that's not a good boundary for me uh cool well fuck off like <laughs> it's literally that yeah. simple so like this it, is my yeah, boundary if you don't like that then like sorry chief yeah. you you have your own shit yeah. i do my shit <laughs> yeah fist, boundaries come down essentially to the freedom of association and when you set a boundary what you're doing is saying i will stop hey thank you normal you mock man i do think i think i did a pretty good job being cool i appreciate it and mm -hmm. then you you say that to a person and then they get to freely choose whether to break those rules or not i mean if like if the argument's going to be about kind of i don't know basic libertarianism or something i all i really have to contribute to it is i thought it was pretty cool when Rand paul's neighbor tackled him for uh oh my oh no 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 no, 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 no you don't no you don't no you don't Tank. no i don't no you i totally don't. think you're talking about you're talking uh, about grand theft auto are you talking about like his uh, his neighbor in grand theft auto 5 yeah, they hey, you know, they had a disagreement. Thank you. They worked it out. Johnny Scarlet. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so <laughs> much. You are wonderful. Welcome, welcome to all the Rand viewers. Paul. To all of you, you know, who are just coming uh, in. Kentucky as, is it Leon um, that, fly, that, that has the you know the, the plot um, element with uh, Rand Paul? To all of you who just come in, there, welcome there, there to my community. There was an interesting, there was um, an interesting want, uh, hot oh, coffee oops. glitch to that portion of the game, too. If you want to be up on the on-screen chat. put in the right combination of codes, Rand Paul and his neighbor fuck. One second. <laughs> oh my God! Well, um, thank welcome to all of the new raiders. Thank you so very much. Um, uh, all of you who are here, very welcome, very happy to have you. We just launched my website, so if you want to appear up on chat, hop over to my site, uh, demonmama.com forward slash live. You can click this one right here. You can reserve your username. You can use Twitch to do so, and then um, you can come hang out and use all of our awesome epic emotes. Love you all very much, and welcome to the show. Anyway, back to the panel. Whoops. Spirit of the 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 spirit of the spirit of the law idea, but you know, just the <laughs> spirit of like leaving things loose rather than actually just like you know not codifying. Oh, the I law, love the but, cacodemon. Uh, you know, one. that's an interesting discussion to have. Um, Breakfast detective. Thank you. Um, hi everyone. I'm Breakfast Detective. Um, right now, I mainly shit post on Twitter. You can follow me there at <laughs> QT Breakfast. Um, but, uh, Good name. Yeah. Good name. I do, uh, I do all kinds of shit. I do politics, news, uh, current events. We haven't streamed now. What, what is the day? I haven't streamed in over two months officially. <laughs> um, however, I am almost done building a desk and after like roller coaster of a life snafu, as you can see behind me, I now have a stable enough place where I can put shit on the walls. Um, so with that being Good shit. said, that being the case, um, trying to get shit up and running as soon as possible. Uh, so stay tuned. If you follow me on Twitter, if you end up liking any of the things I say in the next, uh, 20 minutes, um, then, uh, yeah, check it out. Hmm. 
I don't know. Uh, good, I guess. Uh, Catherine dominates. Hey, Catherine, thank you for uh, jumping in some, at the last we got some minute. We stoners had kind on of a here, weird week uh, where, uh, yeah, and, and Catherine was there. So I'm really ha happy to have you. Always love talking to you. We talked last night on uh, Prime's uh, post uh, debate panel. Um, so uh, give everybody a little um, little taste of what you've got uh, going on uh, with your. Uh, you mostly do uh, other people's uh, panel shows, right, um, Catherine? Um, so historically, I'd mostly gone on other people's shows and been basically one of the biggest That's contributors true. to panel shows in the Twitch space. I have space. a cool one. Look at that. Um, sometimes Kingdom behind Hearts. the scenes, sometimes in chats, often on the panels themselves. Um, but um, I'm not talking future, to you right now, Dee's yeah, Nuts, um, and I'm about to ban you out of my chat I'll if you're going to be annoying. Streaming more myself, as well as hosting more panel shows. We're on a panel right now. Be, um, be polite. Sit down. You can ask the question after. We do Q and A after. Really good panel shows that people really enjoyed. I've run um, Goth yes. Girl Talk and we Demon talk Mamas, about, like, BDSM, Use Kingdom or Hearts. Witch, or like all kinds of stuff. Um, I've run a drama podcast that was super super fun, and I had I argued to like suspect sushi and Ender Naps why it's morally neutral to no, engage because you're in asking silly questions for instance in the middle of right? the panel this was really good content but but that particular show okay. it burnt up guests because no one wants to come on that was easy like that done but um going forward as i put my wow i feel even better and make plans um i think i'm going to stream a lot more consistently and probably end up doing a panel um like five nights a week um depending on who I'm going with, um, including wow. one I'm starting this Sunday at 7.30 EST. I'm pompo jamming uh, right now. This is me. Yeah. Sorry, I went on for a long time. But no worries, no I've, worries. I've been, I've been going through a well, lot you got, of you got some good you got, You've got some new stuff going on now, so it's good to hear. I like, love we had a couple of uh, streamers hat. here today that have got some new uh, stuff going on. Uh, Ouija, we have not uh, talked to you uh, before. Um, you were gracious enough to, to join us, and uh, we talked a little bit on, I will uh, ban on Twitter. You, people are annoying me, I will ban so them. So far, you seem really I'm interesting. Tell us a little that. bit about yourself. Uh, well, so... I came in, I came into this uh, discussion um, from a from a mutual friend, and I was told that this was largely going to be talking about IT tech, uh, IT technology, IT companies, and their engagements with uh, the law. All of which are a huge interest to me. I've been uh, the equivalent of a system administrator for a Ouija. good twelve years now. Ouija. Ouija. Uh, I've been dealing Ouija. with technology Ouija. 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 since I was a kid, and I could cobble computers together wait 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 what victoria I'm, yeah i'm an it uh, no, project what? manager at this point in time oh. but i'm also very involved oh, that's catherine's now, thing um, don't blame me a lot of political that's not my thing i can have some uh extreme views but um Ouija. yeah i'm just i'm here to kind of give my two cents and i love talking about technology and educating about it and kind of seeing what everyone I else has, for has some luigi energy a, it's it's I like luigi so personally. part of our lives and it's so Ever changing and growing. That Victoria, this, do you want to come to the site? The we have a website now. Of, of technology is you can come and get your username on the site. Um, so you can I, sign in with I Twitch. Love kind of We'd love to have you entertaining any notion that it has. So, for, like for example, automation and its impact on uh, the total capitalist society that we have. Like how how is uh, our how is our I like economic dragons. system going to handle automation? Did when you know we're that before? Paying uh, I was Demon Mama. I was Dragon Mama. In robotics and, and machine learning and things that was like that. My old that. name. And so that'll be that's going to be something that we're going to have to deal with as a society. True, uh, Mothman. I agree. Relatively soon. So that's kind of the where I'm coming from. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So personally, uh, I'm uh, was in the was in the military for for ten years, and now I'm out, and also a heavy criticizer of the Department of Defense for a lot of the things that I saw. Can see, oh. I can see how that would uh, yeah give you a whole another insight on a bunch of stuff. Um, um, yeah, and good to have you here, uh, Luigi. And uh, Demon Mama, speaking of people who've got some new stuff going uh, on, tell me about your website. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Demon Mama. Demon Mama Live here on Twitch. But if you really want to get in on the fun, you want to go to demonmama.com forward slash live. I now have my own website where you can watch my stream. You can get access to all my cool emotes. But for those of you who don't know who I am or why you would want to go to my site, uh, I am a politi political, wow, 
a political edutainer um, and a media variety streamer. So I do lots of video games, talk about politics and video games, talk about the politics of video games, film, all kinds of stuff like that, while doing lots of debates, um, talking about the election, uh, commentating on the news, and I think I have some pretty cool opinions. We do a lot of fun stuff too. So if you if you like to have fun while learning about politics, come on over and let me plant some political seeds in your brain, and we'll see what grows. Um, yeah. So um, uh, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Again, if you want to come to my website, demonmama.com forward slash live, come hang out. Yeah. Thanks for being here. I, I love your uh, I love I love how you uh, y your policy knowledge is is really helpful on issues like these. Um, did you, so did you do it kind of like, is it like the white nervosa kind of thing? Is it like the same kind of setup that, uh, DGG and VGG use? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, nice. it's, uh, I use the same, the same framework that, um, a couple, there's a whole bunch of streamers who use it. Um, um, obviously the most, the biggest one is Vosh, um, Xander Hall and, um, uh, Lexi, um, cyber Witch Lexi, I think goes by Excelix now um oh, yeah. on on twitch um they all use a site similar to mine um it's made by this really amazing um developer uh named white nervosa and um she built this really great framework and has helped me get my site up and running super great um lets us have all kinds of emotes um plugs right in through twitch so people can use their twitch account to sign in and don't have to go through any hoops it's really been wonderful and we have a really great uh fun time because we can have infinite emotes so that's great <laughs> Yeah, White Nervos is a really cool streamer. I used to wake up uh, early and watch her fight uh, Nazis in Wolfenstein. She's she's really fun, and apparently a genius when it comes to making uh, these kinds of websites. So that's that's cool that you got that going on. That's a, that's a something to look forward for to uh, look into for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, Kenny, good to have Infinite you back. Infinite power. How's, how's, how's life? How is everything? Yeah, it's super easy. Well, How is the post -post and it's only getting better too. We're gonna have more tools. Oh, it's in the future. going good. Yeah. Uh, before before I say much else, though, I did want to ask Demon Mama, uh, do you have any good content on ethics and games journalism? I do. Oh, gotta check that out. Demonmama.com. Yeah, that's good. Um, shit. No. Uh, yeah, Kentucky Fried Comrade. Uh, we've been working on post post revolution. Uh, you know talking about news stories week to week, every Monday. We, re we really try to focus on stuff, both old news stories and new news stories that we think will have some lasting power hey, or uh, oh, lasting use you value your, uh, your or are just too funny not to talk about. So that's here. kind of the angle that we go with things. I'm going to give everybody their username. So um, let me go through real yeah. quick. Uh, also follow me on Twitter. Um, I, I've been here before. People know who I am. Oh, yeah. Chad, yeah I'm giving definitely. you the user, the proper um, so, username. Uh, Mavasai, I'm sorry, I got like screwed up about who we've um, been. Mavasai, Mavasai. Uh, I know, I'm giving Mava you one too. Say. <laughs> I know, right? I'm, yeah, Manu Jibango over here. And um, nerd. here we go. What's, uh, l let us know what's uh, what's been going on in your world. All right, y'all should have your special while. names now. There you go. Chud, so, test it. So, uh, lately, I've just been uh, mostly just, you know, just grilling playing on playing a lot of video games not doing a lot Dicks. of whatever a lot of there video you games, go look at of, that a lot of red, orange name with a little a pentagram red, big fat feels, cocks feels good mm -hmm. yeah I, I plan to kind of get Love back it. into some uh politics social commentary memes uh probably this week but yeah lately that's what that's what we've been up to and uh i've i've enjoyed myself dank dicks nice. And uh, people know me. I'm Irene. I'm no comment chick. This is the panel that happens every Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, usually we are not suffering from. It's gonna only get better like too. We are today. Hopefully, um, I can find something uh, to do about that. Otherwise, bird brains might be uh, moving yes, to YouTube. Yes, but I have to add that, Wendell. B. I haven't. But, um, I haven't made it yeah, work yet. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, and yeah, like uh, react content, uh, debate analysis. Um, yeah, we're gonna watch that thing. after. Chud, so we were summoning got, you. Um, we found really Doomcock's tanky topic. alt. Um, the, they've been holding hearings. Um, they've been bringing like Zuckerberg and some of the other, you know, big tech officials in front of these hearings. Um, obviously, you know, the Democrats seem to be talking about like the antitrust type issue with the big tech companies. The Republicans are actually interested in it. And, and but theirs is more from the angle of like punishing tech companies that are mean Chilling. to conservatives on their like by by banning them for TOS you know like that that's 
the main Republican uh, bone to pick. But obviously this, you know, there's no legislation, nothing's going anywhere, nothing's going to be done right away. The, the only thing that could happen is, is maybe, you know, in the future with a, a different government, let's say, especially if the Senate flips, um, you, there's the potential to have something. I don't want to get too hopeful because I know the Democrats and I'm not expecting any real addressing of, uh, of the monopolies that have uh, formed and the anti-competitive practices. Um, what, what are people thinking? What are we, what are we in for here? Is this just going to be, you know, both sides like use this as their way to strike at their, you know, to threaten their enemies or, you know, could, could we get some real, um, like we haven't really had antitrust legislation since I don't know when, like it's, it's been something that like uh, the Congress has that ability, but they've neglected it for a long time now. So anybody uh, want to start us off? Yeah. If I could just jump in real quick. Um, as someone who also works in, in tech, uh, I was reading up on this yeah, the other room. night and Financial Times brought up a statistic that I kind of did not realize before uh, the other day, but the top 10 biggest tech companies uh, in the United States outpace uh, the top 10 biggest banks in the United States by about uh, two and a, uh, 2.5 to 1 in terms of overall net value. So when we're talking about a sector, we're talking oh, about you know, a two and a half that times bigger sick. sector than the banks, which is typically everybody's big bugbear. And the thing about them oh is God, that, that looks so cool. they are the at the same time, when we're talking about uh, organizations like Facebook, like Google, like Apple, love them or hate Oops, them, butter dog. they have unbelievable Oops, amounts dog. of data on you and can get information on you, globally position you. Uh, in ways that the government could only dream of. And this is in the hands of a handful of, you know, I mean, we call them rich CEO tech bros, but that's who has that control. Wasn't there like a, um, I, feel, I feel like I saw a documentary on this that um, that was really, really uh, good. I'm, True, I'm trying to remember. Rackison. True, Butter Dog is good. What it was. Um, but but there is a really doc, a good documentary basically on just this on on looking at you know surveillance from the issue of of the corporate side of things in specific and just kind of like it's the kind of documentary that you don't feel good after watching like you're like whoa you know just what you said they've got a lot on us they've got so much power right now I I don't know what can be done you know it's it's the kind of thing that I could see people like clicking away from because it is like legitimately depressing. There's the Financial Times uh, article in the, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can find, maybe somebody in chat knows what I'm talking about, but yeah, we watched it um, on stream a few months ago. Um, no, I mean, like, if you think Big Brother is bad, as bad, you know, just like ugh, corporate Big Brother and having the, de the decentralized nature. So there's a concept called um, inverted totalitarianism. And the idea of this is that like it's a you know type of um, author authoritarian structure that doesn't come from one source like an authoritarian structure kind of is, is traditionally sort of centralized but it's rather like you know comes from various different sources and um you know the capitalist economy is, is kind of like the the primary example of of this sort of inverted totalitarianism when instead of getting you know fucked over by the government in some way you're getting picked apart by um all these uh corporations yeah i don't i honestly don't know if the political Anarcho capital is there to make it happen um especially since the patriot act like post 2001 um hmm? sur surveillance has become kind of like an everyday part of americans lives and normalized to many people so you know, they may be talking, you know, in, you know, veiled language. Oh, you like, we want to do something about this, like, monopolistic situation. But I think there's a couple things that kind of, like, you know, throw a wrench into that. Number one, they're both talking about <laughs> the same thing, but Maybe, from two Jenna. completely different points of view and with two completely different end goals. So, like, you might hear Democrats saying something like, oh, like, Facebook is too powerful. Or, you know, they're they're buying up all of their competitors or whatever, yada, yada, yada. Um, 
but Republicans will say things like, oh, you know, we're trying to protect free speech and, you know, we want to treat them as like uh, publishers of information instead of just, you know, places where people can post whatever the fuck they Kid want. on stream. Um, make websites have to moderate and police all of their content. Um, so I think those are two completely different outcomes that they are inevitably not going to agree on. And then to like cherry on top it, these are all relatively new industries that are not like long standing and established. And most of their services are free. So it it's a trickier territory for people to uh, what's it called? Uh, trust bust, you know, versus something like a tangible, more tangible, like like car manufacturing or, you know, insurance sales or whatever. Yeah, um, I too fear anarcho totalitarianism, um, but no, uh, but there's there's a couple of things like um, we have some pretty major issues with uh, privacy here in the states. Um, actually, I would say we have kind of a global issue like with privacy um, that's pretty hard to resolve because the technology has sort of um, very quickly outpaced the legislation, and I think that's something that can. Um, you know that's likely to happen in a lot of cases right like we are we're likely to be outpaced by rapidly moving um technology you know that we can only sort of respond to um but there is like and and i don't mean to like i don't want to downplay anything but i do want to like give people just a, just a tiny bit of the the like hope pill which is the fact that um despite the fact that a lot of these companies have a lot of access to um to these technologies um, they're also limited by their own structure because at the end of the day, they have to be profitable. And that is like, that's one of those sort of internal contradictions that, um, that, uh, that, that we see in, in a lot of the structures of these, 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 um, companies is that like, sure, they can gather an infinite amount of data on every person on the planet, but does that do anything for them if they have to maintain that data on servers and then also develop the tools to search that data and then also develop the tools to find out whether that data is relevant and then also find a way to monetize that data? Now, um, for a lot of companies, the ad business was how they did this. They gathered data so that they could target ads at you. But um, as we know, people motherfucking hate ads. And um, the ad business has been um like bubbling and straining for like years i literally wrote like a blog about this like like almost 10 years ago about how the ad business is just just it's it's literally like magic like it's just a bunch of hucksters huckstering other hucksters and so like <laughs> no no joke it really really is like none of these ads actually sell anything almost ever except for in the most extreme cases like coca-cola because they can paper coca-cola everywhere so you literally can't even remember what other colas are called or something like that but those are the most extreme cases and for most people the advertising business is just a advertising company just flat out lying and that includes facebook mind you because keep in mind that facebook like bankrupted by accident like nearly every online journalistic outlet um because they lied about video um ads and video content being more effective than it was and they to so just totally had no clue so that's one thing that we can sort of we can sort of recognize is that like yeah um the people are kind of on the back foot in that the technology is outpacing them but companies are limited by the fact that they need to make money, and we can uh, address that as a weakness in how we approach legislation. So, Vivian, is what you're saying basically is that like the um, the ads that they're selling aren't really worth what they're pay what's being paid for them? Is is that kind of what you're getting at when you say that like um, like like essentially digital ads aren't really aren't aren't a good value people are getting ripped off in right? a lot of cases yes and and this is something that we see um like there's the i mean everyone's getting ripped off and that's why i say it's like hucksters like like conning hucksters because it's um, hucksters all the way down it's hucksters all the way down <laughs> nice. because like think about it this way like um you know people who produce content on a um website that serves ads they get like like i don't know like um like imagine like a site like that you stream on and you play games on and then ads are served to your audience whether you want them to be or not and you get like 3 cents for those ads well yeah. 
Well, um, that company that runs that site, whatever that company might be, um, that they are probably making way more from the ads than you're getting for them. Despite the fact that your content is what makes those makes serving those ads possible. But at the same time, the companies that are paying to have those ads, like a shit ton of money to have those ads served on the site are not actually getting all that much value from the ads because they're using outdated data about how effective video ads are. So they're paying all this money to this one company and it's just, again, it just gets lost and nobody knows what's heads or tails of it anymore. So like when it comes to that type of data collection, which is where a lot of the data collection has been used, right? Cause like, I mean, for the most part, barring very extreme circumstances, like, you know, in the case of like a, a strike or something like that, um, companies don't really have much of an incentive to like crack skulls. You know what I mean? Most of the time, depends on the company, but most of the time, like a company, like a streaming company or an advertising company, they don't really have a reason to break, to crack skulls. They don't really have a reason to use data to track an individual and, and hunt them down or anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm getting some heavy breathing into the mic. Is somebody's mic unmuted? Sorry, I don't mean to. I think it's glitched. Could... Yeah. Is it? No. I, believe so. I don't think so. He's it, they, we has got uh, they've got a um, pop filter. So I, I, yeah, and they're oh, pretty far away. Oh, me then. I don't know. I um, yeah, I'm not sure. Wait. Um, okay. So wait. I'll, I mean, I don't think it's me. No, it can't be me. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, it stops now. Thinks it's breakfast. So. I don't know. It could be. Do you have maybe one of those? Maybe, maybe your like your uh, thingies close. I don't know. I have big. I have large nostrils. I breathe air fast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I feel like yeah, sorry. Just, people in my chat like, were asking about it, so I'm I was like, human and I." Yeah. Just to sorry. throw a, another angle into this conversation, though, when we're talking about breaking up big tech, uh, I think that's kind of like it, it's a difficult at first glance concept when you think about the major companies that we're talking about. When we're talking about Apple, Amazon, mm. Google, uh, and Facebook, or whatever. But it's important to look at what is their actual underlying business model. And so when you look at a company like Amazon, just to use them as an example, uh, Amazon, like most people think of Amazon as, okay, so they own Twitch. That's they've a got idea, a Nico Chan. gigantic uh, retail yeah. section of their uh, their business and all that. Those types of things do <laughs> not make them that much money. And in fact, they only exist as a means to essentially advertise their company and get, you know, a uh, uh, mind share in the broader uh, social existence. Where Amazon makes the vast majority of its money is in its cloud computing services, uh, AWS, Amazon Web Services, which make up about 40% of all cloud-based internet services total in, in the world. And when you start thinking about, okay, well, what if you start to break up these different sections of a business, 40% of market share for something like cloud computing, that is monopolistic. It's oligop uh, duopolistic. Ah, I can't speak words. But when you start thinking about breaking up uh, a chunk of the business model like that, you start asking the question of like, well, what is cloud computing services as like an industry? Is it is it an industry where people can compete in a marketplace? Or is it actually more akin to infrastructure, like yeah. roads or yeah. access to water, access to yeah. like, we now question. actually consider access to the internet to be something of a right yeah. uh, in some capacity because you can't get jobs otherwise without it, or you can't uh, communicate with people. Kenny, I kind of thought you, I, I kind of suspected you'd go in this direction. That was why I was interested to yeah, have your opinion point, on this. Actually. That like, yeah, like, you know, why, uh, why trust bus when you can uh, nationalize something that should have been in the comments to begin with. Uh, it makes all the sense mm -hmm. in the world. I do want to give Breakfast Detective a chance to um, shout yourself out. Uh, looks like uh, BD's got some stuff to take care of IRL. Oh, no. There's this other thing that we do called IRL and it, it's important, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, it was so, uh, <laughs> The breathing was Yeah, breathing. just uh, rehash uh, who you are, where we can find you, what you're about. I know y'all will miss my heavy breathing, but I will oh, no. return soon. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. With that being said, uh give irene a follow join her new family of thirteen thousand followers yes. uh check out demamama.com check out the podcast the people here um hope you have an you awesome know. conversation every single one of these people i could endorse except you ouija i don't know about you so i'm not going to cancel myself mm -hmm. but you seem like a great person <laughs> right. <laughs> so check Thank out you. ouija too i will see you all soon um finger guns yeah yeah Thank you for being here, Breakfast Detective, as always. 
but yeah yeah so like you yeah. know what um, yeah like, so i i wanted to jump in and sure. talking about like where the profit comes from is really important when talking about these systems and um ad pay, like the money that people pay to get ads it, it's an investment right people are investing in purchasing ads in anticipation of future profits coming out because of those ads increasing their market space and Wait, so, so Catherine, do you mean, you don't mean like in terms of like branding consumers and like down, way down the line, you just mean like future profits as in. Well, like you're month, paying month some amount line? of money to the ad service, right? And mm -hmm. you're thinking in the future, you'll get a return on this that's worth more than you're putting in. And it includes both like immediate returns and There's a peep growing your market mode? base and growing I didn't know there was, long maybe we should. I'll um, look into it. And that's sort of why it's hucksters all the way down is because when you're trading in investments like this, like nothing's a sure game. And especially if the type of ads you're working with, like aren't things that people actually get tricked into believing in, or if you're buying ads in a space like Twitch, where the savvy consumers don't even end up seeing any ads. Oh, or like there's will, all kinds if you could drop them in the channel suggestions, I'll take a look at them and see if we can add them on. Investments companies are making aren't actually useful to them hope pill that's yeah great. you know i wanted to actually like uh, yeah, god tyt keeps coming up uh, and you know like obviously <laughs> it's not my preferred news source or anything but uh -oh. um there's something of course yeah um there's something that i think jink uger used to say about radio i knew it might have been sam cedar i don't remember which boomer i'm thinking of but it's one of those uh youtube uh you know proto uh left uh listen boomers. not to um, interrupt you but i must defend sam cedar's honor Sam Cedar is a proud Gen Xer, and he will die he, on that hill. He's not a boomer. He's not a boomer. Okay, he's an Xer. I'm sorry. So Xers, maybe they're both Xers. Maybe Jink and uh, yeah, that's probably I'm probably speaking more correctly when I call them um, uh, Gen Xers uh, rather than boomers. Uh, proper. I defended Sam. So, honor. Um, but they, notice they, me, they, Sam. They would talk about radio. They would talk about terrestrial radio, meaning you know, radio not on <gasps> the internet, awesome. right? Um, and how it's still like a pretty Sam big, Harris? you know, there, there, there's, there's a lot of ears on it. Um, and that um, the, the, essentially Post the, the ad majority sales report? were just complete. Um, True. Like like Shank nobody knew what they were buying. Like like it oh, was I know. a total black box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was like they had ratings, right? That they could sell as like you know you're gonna reach this many consumers, but the ratings were completely like just bogus. Like Jink went or not Jink, I think it was Sam Cedar went through the methodology of how they actually. Oh, I know um, he does. Do those um it drives do, me nuts. do the ratings for for radio, and it was just complete garbage. I mean it's it's. You know, basically, but it's an easy up, mix up to be um, fair. Numbers, <laughs> yeah. Um, and and this is the thing like, so much of it is, is speculation. Um, for a while, uh, I worked in freelance writing, and one of the jobs I would get a lot, um, and in fact, one of the jobs I ended up working was for like an SEO startup. Mm -hmm. Um, and that shit talk is, about black magic, yeah. It's it's <laughs> it's not, it, they just make it up. They just literally make it up, and the whole thing, the entire success model of a of like an SEO startup or an S, like an SEO, you know, search engine optimization. For those who don't know what SEO is, I shouldn't use the jar jargon, but search engine optimization. It means like trying to get your website higher on Google for noticing, like playing. It's trying about playing the algorithms and stuff. It is just bullshit from the top down. Now that doesn't mean there aren't some people who are like somehow good at it but 90 percent of the time when you're talking to an seo firm they're just finding any number that sounds good or looks good and telling you that number and then you're paying for their service and maybe it helps your company maybe it doesn't but most of the time you won't know if it's actually helping your company or not and um and and until after they've already made a lot of money off of you and um it's pretty wild to be completely honest and like a lot of advertising which is one of the biggest industries in the world is built off of this to the degree in fact that google um god this was like two years ago i want to say two three years ago google had this like huge conference i can't remember the exact name of it off the top of my head i wish i had it on hand but um they had a huge conference i think it was called like the better ad the the better ad conference or something and their goal was to like set best practices for advertising because they realized that their own business model was so at threat because people were so tired of obnoxious intrusive ads and this was when google um pushed forward like this seemingly um 
like self-contradictory thing where they're like you can't do we will not like we won't list your site if your site is um like pinged for for hosting like full page ads that pop up automatically like we're gonna delist your site if you have like annoying autoplay ads even though autoplay ads were being pushed by one of the other ones like facebook saying oh autoplay ads are great 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 but um it was actually harming their ability to make money um, off of ads the biggest what probably the biggest ad like company you know that's that's google's entire thing so it's it's there's a there's so much speculation and that makes it very um getting some f some open mic sounds i think it sounds like some background noise again sorry don't mean to be annoying but um it's just uh it's making it hard to talk that's um, the only way we figure these things out thank you demon mom yeah yeah no problem um to kind of to kind of piggyback on that and to kind of uh, add to the whole ad revenue type. Yep, that's talk. true, Eurist. Anecdotally, can you name three ads that you've seen in the past 24 hours? Like Travis this Scott Meal. Travis Scott Meal. Ah. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, so, yes. <laughs> but yeah, like, I can. We've we've uh we've kind of created we've created our own mental blinders to a lot of these things cuz I just I'll see it pop up and cover the subtitles on a YouTube video and click it off. And it's, it's become more of an obstacle than anything else. Now here's my concern is that when, when, when it's determined that buying the ad space simply isn't profitable, what will they do with their troves of data in order to make that profit? Cause at the end of the day, they've collected this data in order to turn that profit to begin with. And there's, there's That's some true. You won't see ads uh, if you join the website in a, in a lesser degree, there's, there's been some negative true. impacts just from for example your grocery store coupon although i think card. some of them still sneak in but Ooh, I, I can't hear it. well um for so when you fill up your grocery card uh coupon thing where you can get discounts this and the other you supply name address phone number now here's the thing uh in the same way that that this data that is mined is sold to advertising companies it's also sold to people who simply collect information and this is actually one of the big ways that people who dox uh, collect information because they subscribe to these uh, providers that scrape this data from things like your your grocery card uh, yeah, coupon, yeah. your grocery coupon card, and then they're able to aggregate all that data to be able to to launch a dox attack on someone. So even even something as simple as going and being like, well, I'm going to save about two cents on this uh, can of I soup. I think that is the stat, uh, Mothman. It, in the end, it, it could actually en endanger you depending on who you are. Does anyone remember the uh, the target pregnancy controversy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is from a couple of years back, yeah. but uh, Target was, uh, the, the, the store, Target, He's was implementing a new way to deliver... Uh, ads to customers using kind of yeah, algorithmic predictions on people's That's purchasing the very habits. Nice. And so this young Two woman ones, actually. Uh, we also got the cringy was buying cash. a bunch of stuff from Target Bing. and they began sending uh, a whole bunch of targeted advertisements in the mail actually to her address and it ended up getting her father to realize that she was actually pregnant because the algorithm had dictated that, oh, women who buy these sets of items tend to be doing so because they're pregnant. So let's send her all these targeted advertisements for baby products and cribs and stuff like that. She didn't even know she was pregnant yet. <laughs> <laughs> I recall that. That was, it's 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 amusing, but also deeply, deeply horrifying. Especially Sending Pompo. When you go into, Yay, thank you, Meat Bomb. Uh, I, I think it's also like deeply, deeply hopeful and impressive. Like this is the, power of the tools that we have at our hands You're when it right. comes to these algorithms and neural networks and it's the reason that there's things like the um the cancer scanning um ais that are able to yeah, find yeah. cancer in situations where the doctors are not themselves able to like come to that same conclusion with the evidence we have like okay. if if we weren't in this capitalist structure where there's okay. these corporate monopolies on top of these um structures being put in place these, these systems right it would be really cool actually to be able to just Thanks, get an email when the data collection around you notices that you're pregnant right it would actually help you if you could just immediately find out you're pregnant because you put out enough data into the world to tell you that 
and, and like these systems could give you other useful, helpful data as well. If we didn't have to be afraid of the big government or big corporation using that data to harm us. Well, and in fact, we already have um, some examples of that sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> oof. Um, getting some background pickup. Sorry. Um, maybe push talk would be best. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, we have some examples of this, right? Like, I mean, IBM's, um, Watson, I think it is, is currently used for, um, for like, uh, diagnoses and it's like ridiculously accurate. And in fact, they're able to plug in, um, like, uh, data from, um, experiments that are done on bias on like dr bias so that the um the the computer can sometimes make suggestions that a doctor's own unrecognized bias wouldn't um recognize like for example one thing this is just a sort of an offhand example um like um it is statistically true that like overweight patients are much less likely to get accurate diagnoses because there's so many doctors that are unconsciously biased against people who are overweight. Um, and so they'll say, even when the, the evidence says otherwise, they'll still say, oh, you just need to lose weight. You just need to lose weight and ignore things. But the computer is not vulnerable to that as to the same degree to that type of bias because they you can build in a, a um, like data that we have on how bias is prevalent. Now, it's not going to solve every situation, but we do have examples of this sort of data being used for good. Um, but yeah, the problem... Kind of like unskews the uh, the bias. It can be used to, to counter counteract that, but to be like another like another thumb on the scale in the opposite direction to kind yeah. of like maybe make it more of a wash. Yeah, and it's especially helpful in cases where there's like sort of like unrecognized bias because yeah, yeah, like yeah. the doctor would not even know that they're reading that bias in, and this computer could sort of correct that, and then that could fix their bias in the long run because say they have a whole bunch of overweight patients they keep telling them to lose weight but then they keep seeing their computer keeps telling them hey you need to talk about this then they go oh, oh and slowly learn that oh yeah actually this could be an issue um so those are some those are some really good good applications we do have this problem with the profit motive sort of leaking in and i do think there's an issue um with uh, you know, I mean, especially I, when I think of like sort of malignant applications, I always, my brain always goes to like Peter Thiel, right? Um, the, the PayPal guy, the Palantir guy, he names, literally names oh all God, of his yeah. companies after like, it's like, how obvious can you get? But, um, but that's, he has a venture firm called Excelsior or something, yeah, something yeah. ridiculous. He like... has multiple Lord of the Rings named ones too. I think he has like one that's named after like a, um, a character from the Silmarillion and it's just like oh my god like but but yeah um Peter Thiel is like somebody who um has made it clear that like he's willing to to f harvest data and sell it to basically anyone um and those are the sort of ones I think we need to be um really really aware of I think one of the big things is like controlling how data is used and where it's able to be to go legally I don't think that we can ever have any hope of controlling data completely. There is always going to be situations. I mean, just like in real life, like in the same way that like a streamer can accidentally dox, th dox themselves by popping something up on the screen. There's always going to be ways that something unpredictable could reveal you and put you in danger. That's very, very hard to prevent. But what we can do is we can say, hey, um, we need to prevent, uh, like we need to put firm lines between where data collection is going. Like for example, if you're collecting certain types of consumer data, there needs to be limitations on what can be collected and where that can go. And I do actually think that like, um, while it's imperfect, like, um, some of the, the EU data privacy laws were a really good step in that direction. Um, especially because they implement, um, lim like, like basically, um, t like a, I don't want to call it like like a time bomb. Basically, the data will it has to be in their programs to delete the data, um, and they have to be able to display that it does that securely in order for certain data to be collected. That means there's only a limited amount of time that you could be harmed by this at all. Um, the real danger for me comes when you have um, when you have collaboration between state entities um, and um, you know monopolies that are willing to hand over data, um, which you know, some companies have been willing to do that and others have not. Um, to Apple, who is an offender on many levels, to their credit, um, they have been very unwilling to participate with federal agencies on handing over data. Um, they've taken a pretty firm line on that. And again, um, this is not me like praising them majorly. I feel like that's a pretty low bar, but they have stood by that. And that's a good thing. Um, and we should look 
towards solutions like that, which say like, hey, we're going to make um, encryption standard. We're going to make data only last so long, like right to forget laws, sort of things like that are, in my opinion, very important, um, especially when you start getting state entities involved, because that's where it becomes dangerous. For example, we all know that Google data, data from Google was used by, say, the Obama administration to identify and locate um, people abroad who were later killed. So whether or not those people were done, whether that was just or not, we can recognize that this is a potential that's very, very terrifying. Um, well, I think that's also where the importance of trust busting a lot of these companies comes into play. Uh, you know, I brought up that statistic earlier that the top 10 biggest tech corporations are twice, uh, two and a half times bigger in terms of market valuation than the 10 biggest banks in the United States, which that was so wild. I didn't even know that uh, until I had read it just the other day. But the importance of breaking these things up is that it isn't just that you are uh, kind of doing what they did to Bell AT&T back in the past, where it's making a bunch of smaller regional companies, but it's also limiting their yeah, individual true, political power. Because when you have a giant multinational corporation of these sizes and magnitudes, that gives them uh, uh, capital and social and political power does, that is yeah. that scales with those sizes. And so uh, Demon Mama brought up the European Union's GDPR law. And there's stuff to criticize in that, but that did implement right to forget. And what ended yes, up happening did. out of that GDPR is good. was you see Facebook great, trying to use its pure size and monopolistic leverage to try to overturn portions of right to forget because their entire business model is we don't forget. We have your data and we sell it. That's our business model. We can't be forgetting it. And they are of such a size and magnitude that they have the resources and means to try to overturn that law. And so when you start splitting up these companies, one, I think you get a clearer sense of, well, okay, how do they make their money? Amazon Web Services, that's actually more of a utility than it is a real business. And if you strip that out of Amazon, well, okay, they have an online sales portal. That's, that's a business, whatever. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. You have Google, you know, separate out YouTube. Maybe that's a business, maybe it's not. But you start to get a clearer sense of like, okay, what are these companies actually doing as businesses? Where are they actually innovating? What's their actual power? Because if it's just that they're leveraging their monopolistic social power, well, that makes them dangerous, frankly. Yeah, I agree. And I really couldn't agree with you more on that. Um, like there's there's this whole thing i think one of the things that we're going to have to sort of address and and i don't know if there is a sort of um single top-down solution to this particular issue that i'm about to talk about um which is why i think i would suggest that like um like literacy towards the internet and literacy towards advertisement is important more, more important now than ever before like part of the reason why um these organizations are able to function the way they are is because again that they can hide everything behind speculation um if people if people were like new like wait a second like most ads are not profitable most ads don't actually help those products um and in fact those products like again only the largest ones actually benefit from those advertising advertisements because they're able to paper the entire world and there are advertisements that are effective right i mean like like for example like i mean fuck i we do ads all the time on here and these are pretty effective we gain ourselves followers and all kinds of stuff like that but the ads that we do are relatively fair and i think that most of our viewers would yeah. would, would recognize that stuff like I, I think the core of making an ad that's actually effective and fair is that people actually want to watch an ad if it's a good ad Right? Yeah. If someone watches an ad and says, oh, I'm glad I watched this afterwards to themselves, like that's that's the ideal that you're sort of looking Or at for. the very least say, oh, this is fair. Like this makes sense. Like, for example, if a band plays a song and then shouts out their album afterwards, you're like, oh, this makes sense. They want me to buy the album so that I can enjoy the music. It's a it's a, a quid pro quo. You know what I mean? So in, in some ways, we mm -hmm. actually want to be targeted um, more in, in that, like, we don't want our right. time wasted by ads that do, that we're, you know, Never, you know, don't sell, um, don't sell like um, Kobe beef to a vegetarian or, you know what I mean? Right. Just, yeah. Right. We, we don't want to be targeted with ads at when ads means like someone trying to convince you to get something you don't want. What you want is just generally to learn information that you do want oh, yeah, to learn. Oh, yeah. There's emo And so if the ad happens to be like 
oh, I didn't know that weighted blankets are really nice to be under. And then you see an ad for a weighted blanket, you go and buy one, your life is improved because there's a weighted blanket in your life now. Like this was an ad that was very successful for you as an individual. And um, I wanted to jump in for a little bit because everything seem, we're talking about seems to come together to a head in this idea that I have, which is that we are treating this system um, with like band-aids. We're trying to treat the symptoms, right? Any time that you use legislation or regulations after the fact of something going wrong to either trust us or make specific laws against specific things that are wrong on these social media sites, like this is always inevitably going to come after the fact. Um, it's good to do in the meantime, but what we actually need to do is cure this disease that's causing these symptoms, right? Yeah. And the issue at play is that we have market forces that intertwine in a certain way that lead to companies profiting in the shape of the companies oh, that sick. we see good now, one. right? Um, and I think there's like I know, um, two ways to go about solving this. Um, you, so, so you have to actually change what the market forces are to change the way that a market force plays out. That's um, true. So I think that like it is possible to spread a culture of Zoom. consumer education <laughs> and awareness to spread a culture driving on the ceiling of like people understanding why ads exist, yes. what they do, what these companies are doing with their data, how to avoid giving out data that you shouldn't be giving out like the return on giving out data and what you get in exchange, as well as specifically um, more companies like the Wikipedia Foundation nonprofit starting up. Because if you look at the internet, there's one sort of like, quote unquote, beacon of neutrality that has become um, like internet infrastructure, digital infrastructure, and that's Wikipedia. Um, you can go to Wikipedia and you can by and large trust that as long as there's a source there that you can go by what Wikipedia says. And if you did go read the source, the source would back up what was said in the main article. And the reason that you can Traffic use Wikipedia jam. without watching ads, the reason that Wikipedia is successful is because as a nonprofit that is running off of charity and charitable donations, the incentive structures for that company, the, the market forces that are being applied to Wikipedia as a system without any agency, right? It, it, it all points towards it being a trustworthy, um, bipartisan source of information. Yeah, and um, honestly, uh, it's really like, I like, I love talking about Wikipedia because it's such an incredible anomaly founded by a, 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 an ANCAP, um, a, a very, I will say a principled one at the very least as, as, as principled as ANCAPs can get. Um, but well, it, it would make, wait, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, it would make sense that it's founded by an ANCAP because like I was just saying with the Wikipedia foundation shows a perfect understanding of market forces and which ones end up being corrupt and like make the consumer work against their own interests. Right, so it makes sense to me that ANCAP made yes, it was. this company or started Jimmy this Wales. foundation. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, no. Um, the thing is, like, I will say, like, I I attended actually a few um lectures with uh, Jimmy Wales, the the founder of 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 the Wikimedia Foundation, which oversees Wikipedia. And one of the things that, like, when he built that, like, he decentralized himself. Uh, like, like he didn't put himself at the center of the organization and specifically limited his own powers, which is like. Like, again, it's it's like a fluke because most of the time people don't do that. But it, it does show that these sort of um, decentralized structures can be forces for good if the system is built to incentivize the correct things um, and that they will self-perpetuate because those incentives build towards the tool. So, like, I mean, I can imagine, like, I, I've talked about this before on my stream. Um, sometimes it can be a little pie in the sky because I am not, like, an, inf like an internet infrastructure expert, but I'm just, I like to imagine... A, a sort of uh, video hosting site, something like a YouTube, but like a, a public YouTube that is 
the goal is it's a nonprofit. The goal is that you contribute and the money that goes into it improves the system itself for the purpose of that system because everybody wants to have the videos because we recognize universally that these videos are great. And it might not be the only service that exists, but it could be something that could be universally accessible and something that's mm -hmm. as strong as as a as a wikipedia and that would be incredible imagine yeah. if we were able it, to get a wikipedia so, video. So at least a competition for the for the you know organizations that aren't doing you know what i mean that's that's at least some pressure on um well, on, on well, big even data more than, even more than that what you're describing would be a voluntary anarchic um corporation that is provi providing infrastructure to the population just based on market pressures and having set up the um, correct set of influences and market pressures at the beginning that sort of perpetuate itself. Yeah, I mean, I don't even know that it's necessary to um, see it in terms of a market either. I mean, to a certain degree, it is in the in the most primordial sense of a market. It's something that's being mm -hmm. demanded by people and that is being delivered. But I think that we can recognize that like um, there are uh, tools or there are are. are I don't know if I want to say tools. I guess we could say infrastructures. There are infrastructural elements, stuff like um, water, electricity. Um, some of them have been around, you know, f with us forever. Food, um, housing, water. Well, humans have always needed those things. Um, but there are new ones like electricity, the the internet, um, access to ver be being able to verify information in the form of Wikipedia. I think what we're finding is, is that um, certain forms of mass media are actually really really important to us and so um building like tools that aren't driven to like just be profitable but instead are designed to just perpetuate themselves so we have that tool available like a library libraries have intrinsic value to many many people um and those things i think can be built so sometimes i think people um i think there's this tendency to be like ah well you know youtube is going to disappear one day because it's you know, not profitable or ads are going to become less profitable or whatever. But then we should take that and from there conclude, well, if that's the case, don't we have a um, mm. motivation to build a tool that isn't going to collapse because the ad market collapses? That's there because yeah. we love sharing videos. Well, exactly. I, and, and because uh, that's the Kieresi mode. That is um, my girlfriend's ads, character like smoking weed. That there is this model out there for building this infrastructure and this, this, um, that. Yeah, the address. She's handing a joint to you. I think there's also a problem with the my kind of OC. nature of how true, true. Th this is, a, is it's kind of a couple of historical trends with how uh, you know finance has yep. evolved, how uh, the structure of businesses has evolved Very over nice. the past several decades. But you see a big move towards. Um, the only way emails, so we, when so we talk great. about like the disrupt economy what's actually being talked about there is how can we uh how Cursed. can we undercut an existing in, uh infrastructure in, existing industry you hear this with lyft and uber you hear this with amazon uh, and retail and the entire business model is a runaway game of how much money can we burn to the effort of becoming a monopoly so that once we are a monopoly, we can therefore actually be successful as a company? So when you look at Amazon's history, I think it was only in the past couple of years it's become profitable. And that was through subsidizing their retail market uh, with the profit they were actually making on AWS, which they then turned into essentially a monopoly at this point. I, I know 40% doesn't make you the single owner monopoly, but... That's enough close. for today's standards. When everyone yeah, else is at, yeah, like single digits. Yeah, it kind of does de facto. Um, when you look at the business model of uh, companies like Lyft and Uber, they, yes, they disrupted an entire industry of taxi drivers and things like that. And they did so by underpaying workers, getting, you know, uh, evading regulations for the transport industry. And they burn money. They do not make money. Uh, but they do it in the sole purpose so that they can one day be a broader transportation company. And they use their their mind share, their social power. Like if you were in the state of California, I don't know if any of you Gotta are go particularly case there. in the state of California. Thanks for but the policy, you, Jones. If you Consider were to go site, onto Demon the Mama, Lyft or Demon Uber Mama. app, Demon app it is all pro yeah, Prop exactly, 22 Urist, propaganda. Literally, if you order a ride in California, they give you an advertisement for Proposition 22. 
And Proposition 22 is trying to maintain their business model because if they cannot treat, uh, if they cannot evade you basic labor regulations, if they have to pay out benefits, if they have to pay a minimum wage, their business model no longer exists. And this is about the uh, independent contractor status of employees of Uber yeah. and Lyft, right? For for California in the yeah. Prop uh, Prop 22, they want to enshrine that so that that can't be a, a way of you know sort of undermining their business model and forcing them to to actually you know treat their empo- employees halfway uh, decently. Just, just as a little aside. If you order a ride on Uber in the state of California, you know how they have the little car graphics that show like, oh, there's a car on the map and it's coming to you or it's traveling here or there. All of those little cars now have little speech bubbles and they're cute little cars and the speech bubbles say yes on 22. And there you go. That's so terrible. Yeah, I heard about um, I heard about Uber Eats doing uh, putting Prop 22 flyers in their um in their deliveries as well so you get your food and you pull out your receipt and attached to your receipt is a little vote yes on prop 22 if you want to keep getting food in the future um which in my mind should be fucking illegal also um, last one really quickly but i i, I want to hear what you have to say demon mama yeah uh you uber eats just bought postmates so they just got oh rid of God. a competitor so oh you know what are they trying oh, to do this they're is trying the to monopolize the space thing when capitalists say that capitalism funds innovation right what big capitalist companies do is they she, purchase she. out innovators they dismantle them for parts right like like literally this big corporate system that we're living in is chopping the heads off of like new innovative technologies and companies constantly yeah. microsoft did that for talk years about that so too. i feel like they're kind of the poster child for taking taking one innovative thing breaking it to pieces and then jamming those pieces into their products to improve them. Unfortunately, I think it only took them so far and now they're having, I mean, I, I can't even remember. The, I, the, the I'm st- not strong enough on the history, but like didn't Bill Gates steal the computer thing and like just go make his own copy except for profit? Like, isn't that from the very, very first beginning of dos how that company's run it's it's a little more nuanced, a more or DOS. less yes more or less <laughs> all right let's see start off as like was a hacker or whatever and he oh. took like like a base like a baseline of what would become dos actually belong to someone I else i finally understand why people are so hardcore about linux and try to get people to move to that system right like sure it's complicated and hard but it's anarchism at its and Copy like, left. this is this is actually what we want to move towards is is getting rid of these toxic concepts like copyright getting rid of these toxic concepts like Holy copy fuck, left copy I, left foss foss okay. foss there, you go buy a razor and you've got a pink razor that cost a dollar 20 and you've got a blue razor and it cost a dollar but they're both super shitty disposable razors that are going to be like they'll last you one use basically and then you You throw it out and you're throwing out this toxic plastic and you're throwing out a chunk of metal like why is so even if this is what we're doing we should be recycling that chunk of plastic and recycling that chunk of metal but even worse there's this wonderful thing that was invented way way back called a double-edged safety razor it's a solid piece of metal that you open up you put a razor in you close it and each time you need a new razor, you could pay like 10 cents if you oh, less than get that. it from the right place to get a replacement razor. It works better to have just one blade. At some point, marketing companies found out, hey, two blades, people think in an advertisement, if you advertise a razor with two blades, that it's going to be a more effective razor. And, and the reason that these shitty disposable plastic razors have like two or three or four blades and and a little um, pad of chemicals on them is because it irritates your skin so much to have multiple blades running over your skin that they have to include chemicals to counteract the irritation that the extra blades are there's doing. a phrase in uh, there's a phrase in advertising you don't sell the steak you sell the sizzle so what we're really selling isn't a razor as much as a perception of razor one centi blade will, you know treat your skin as gently as I you love want it. it and really it's anything but because mm-hmm. 
it's completely detached. Like the what they're selling, what they're advertising, and what they're giving you, there is no relationship like implied. I mean, I and, used to, I, I always out myself as like a little kid when I saw ads for like things like Seven Eleven, and they they'd show somebody like you know, like, like down a river of like cola. And then there was like a chocolate waterfall and like everything, like it looked like, you know, a giant candy land that's possible. and you would just go there and consider using fill, safety right? razors. And like, Very as a little cheap, kid, I couldn't figure out like, wait, that's like the commercial. A, a is that not what's at 7-Eleven? Is 7-Eleven not really like that? Is it just a shitty like gas station? Really? Like I was convinced <laughs> from like this advertising that was just like, you know, they showed their whole store as if it was like Willy Wonka's like factory. And like, I was thinking, you know, that's what it was. And I mean, that's an obvious example that any adult's going to pick out and say, okay, that's not really, you know, what they're selling. But um, in a way, you know, they, they there is this detachment. There, there so is what, this lack what, of... Irene, uh, Irene I'm so offended oh. by you insulting the honor of 7-Eleven. Didn't you go there <laughs> last night or something? For, yes, uh, I went there yesterday. I got a spicy bite. I put some chili cheese on it. I it like the delicious. nachos, honestly. Okay. Like, do we like the, 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 the nachos from 7-Eleven are pretty good? Listen. Can we agree on that? 7-Eleven. So what's, what's extremely telling as a is that what ads sell you. Um, okay, wait. Let me recreate. It's really useful to go and look at potato chips when you want to investigate True. advertisement. Because if you look at potato chip advertisements, what you notice is that what advertisements are selling you is addiction. Um, if you look at Blaze <laughs> Good question, and you Eurus. look at um, Pringles, right? Once you Mega pop, Blades. you can't stop. Keyblade. Right? This is an ad. Um, and then another one is, I bet you can't eat just one. What they're saying is that their product is so incredibly addictive that no matter how hard you try, you will not be able to keep yourself from eating more of them. And and this is what the actual product of a potato chip yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. No, and, this and is more the, the the cheapest possible combination of carbohydrate sugars, yeah. um, salt, and grease to directly stimulate your brain in an addictive manner. Yeah, yeah. The they, price. They've actually done and, research on this. This is kind of mm -hmm. my wheelhouse. Like I I, I did uh, nutrition in undergrad, and basically they figured out a ratio, like Catherine's talking about, of sugar to salt to fat. And if you hit this perfect ratio, it's like addictive. Like there's something goes off in the brain and you and, get that and, effect of just like, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You sit down and, to eat a couple of potato chips and pretty soon the whole bag is gone. And then, and it's you know, more than that, because these companies have put billions of dollars into investigating these things. Yeah. Like yeah. The mouthfeel itself is this addictive quality. Are we talking about that, the mouthfeel? Like, and we in, are on, talking on about the mouthfeel. Wow. This is the first um, time we've had mouthfeel discourse. Of potato chips, right? The, the way that you crunch it. Um, our I can talk about mouthfeel all day. Exist in like chewing things. Um, we don't need to do a just so story about why. I would say it's because we used to eat a lot of like carrots and shit, right? We used to eat plants. Tubers. That we oh, had, I do that yeah, all the time. Tubers hard, that we would have to from... chew on a lot. But like, it seems like when you eat potato chips, your body just wants to keep reaching and grabbing another one and chewing things. Which is funny because so, if you eat just potatoes, no, like it's one of the most satiating foods. Like it's uh, maybe even the most right. satiated food. They did research on it, and just potatoes by themselves, like you you will eat less calories of that than you would of something else. But you know, you take it like Catherine said and combine it with the right ingredients and the right ratios, and there is like they, a yeah, magic they packed really our, our brains in in a lot of ways with us uh, with junk. The mouthfeel, right? right? And so so it's really weird that it's legal for people to sell you potato chips if you look at it from this angle, Mouth right? Feel. Like the same amount of research, the same goals that tobacco companies use uh, in out, creating the cigarettes that they sell have been put into creating potato chips and products like them, marketing them to people, putting them by the checkout counter at the aisle, right? With the smaller bag that costs proportionately way more knife, because knife. they know that like, hey, you'll grab this small bag because you're addicted even though there's a larger bag that's cheaper per chip over there because it's bad for you to eat this product and you know it. And so you know not to buy the big bag in the yeah, aisle, yeah. right? Maybe. But they trick you with Maybe. The, the, the egg. I'll see. I'll you're, see. You're, paying, so you're paying, you're paying for a, that limit would be a, on, a natural limit on your potato chip consumption. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. Yep. So it, uh, to kind of segue, uh, addiction and back into IT technology. Oh, um, really quick. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I wanted to get this point out and it won't make sense later. Um, 
the reason I brought this up is the addiction model. True. Mm -hmm. Why there's going to be lots more emotes are over time. how they are. Um, the reason you buy disposable razors is because it's not prof profitable to sell people a solution to their problem. If you just sell people laser hair removal, they will pay a lump sum to get rid of the hair that they don't need. And then they won't need to buy lasers. This, mm -hmm. like, I, I can think of this easily because this is something I want to save up and do at some point. But the same way, if you just sell someone a razor that you can replace the part that needs replacing and they don't need to buy again and again and again, it's, it's more profitable to be selling them these cheap disposable plastic razors that yeah. they buy, throw out, buy, throw out. And, and this is why so many things are built to fail. Um, there's some famous documentary about it. I think they talk about uh, light bulbs a lot in the documentary. So uh, talking about addiction, um, I actually linked uh, a TED Talk by James Brittle, um, and it, it's titled The Nightmare Videos of Children's YouTube. And he kind of goes into how this algorithm has created these, these markets for uh, kids to basically binge watch uh, really obscure things such as like uh, Kindle eggs being opened. And it's just videos on videos and videos of these of these eggs being opened. And it's a little shot of serotonin because there's anticipation and then there's the reveal and then it goes back again and again. And you see this not only with these these openings or unboxings, it's basically kids versions of unboxings, but even um, kids songs. And then there's a billion different variations of one kid songs with like puppet hands. However, because this algorithm, this powerful platform on YouTube has created not only uh, a way to kind of key in on what people want, but to monetize that people in turn have started creating content in order not to make anything of real value, but uh, simply in some ways, yes, but the it's algorithm more sinister. and work with it, Peace. gaming the system essentially. But now there's these millions of videos that are being created just for the purpose of appeasing the algorithm, getting in line, getting watched. And there's yeah. no, there's no, there's no artistic, uh, in, I guess, integrity or soul or spirit Chunkies? to it. Oh and yeah, they're procedurally generated. Actually, yep. yeah, we've been covering this beat for a long time. This is the Finger Family, um, yep, also known exactly. as Elsagate. Republicans or, or you know conservatives have a, had a particularly sinister interpretation Pringle of what Gate. was going on here. They thought it was literally like liberalism's trying to ruin my children by sending them like disturbing <laughs> videos of pregnant Elsa and Spider Man pushing her around in a shopping cart and shit like that. Yeah, this is this stuff is wild. But yeah, it started when somebody figured out that like you know yeah kids will click on kids entertainment and they're not very discriminating because they're little kids the parents hand them the mm -hmm. tablet and they're just the kid goes wild on it Elsa Gate. so they yeah, were like true. you know it's we real. can like literally make H3, everything H3 has a video a maybe we'll watch it it's really good you know it's algorithm really fucking and funny. basically um you know we got this uh, we got the song we got the finger family song oh that would we be got fun a hand that maybe we'll do that around. after and on each video we're gonna put different characters you know this time it's gonna be the hulk next time it's gonna be elsa mm -hmm. next time it's gonna be iron man on the hand and you know this is daddy finger mommy finger anyway it's just like basically they're slots and you switch the different ips out into those slots uh, yeah and you just if, make if you want to hang out on the website you know, based on a it's the you know, same the kids as far as stats but you'll have more fun and, B, and you get to hang out on the screen roll over now so come join me noob monster something. i think maybe me. that's the reason that you get the uh it doesn't the same as far as stats keep go, auto playing like it used to back in the day it'll actually stop and ask you are you still listening are you still watching cheaper too so they've sort of fixed that but yeah the the only reason they fixed it is because advertisers got wise that some of their money was being used to advertise to like you know, a, a pre-verbal baby, um, you know, just watching <laughs> yeah. uh, Elsa and uh, Spider-Man content. Yeah, and, if and you like, want to... This is extremely dystopian if you think about it in the right terms, right? Like, we are setting up a system where an AI is live generating an output to put also into... Also, Spider-Man stuff is real, yes. Brain, right? Like, when you receive uh, We can talk about that after. You watch a video, I'll put that on the notes. This is a live input into your brain, especially when it's a baby watching it. And so if an AI without any human guidance is like applying um, evolutionary pressure. We'll talk about it after. Come up I got it on the perfect note. Video for wild. people to watch. It, it, it's similar to if that same AI was just putting a random chemical into people. With uh, that same you can, but it's there's a small glitch that's happening right now that White Nervosa is working on fixing, Dadle Dan. Right? Oh, Nisteon! That will make people 
want to watch it. And it doesn't matter what the thing is. And that's why we see on YouTube all these that's weird why there's subcultures coming up of ASMR or pimple popping or unboxing or the thing with the kids' videos and anything and anything and anything. It's because once the AI pressure, get the systematic pressure gets applied here to this market, right? Because your time and attention is a market. Um, yeah. It, it finds solutions without people having to understand how or why. If just wait really until it, just just wait until they get the ability to make um to auto generate Onision videos and and drama content. Demon Mama. Oh yeah, no. I was gonna say if you really want to like uh if you if you're if you're feeling masochistic and you want to like uh just just have a a a day of um of being black pilled, I highly recommend you. Um, go wander into a Walmart and check out the toy section and what the toy section in a Walmart looks like these days. Now, this might make me sound a little bit like a boomer, but I noticed that nobody on here is, uh, is like really probably at the time where they're buying a lot of, uh, you know, toys for kids. Maybe some of you have kids, but, um, but if you've ever been to a Walmart toy section in particular, you will probably notice that there's not all that many toys on the shelf anymore what there are is blind boxes aisles and aisles of blind boxes including a, a a like there's this thing called like ryan's world or something um who's a youtuber that does exactly what you were talking about unboxing things and he sells or not obviously this kid because he's a kid but his company sells um unboxing toys that are branded in the brand of his unboxing YouTube channel. And in fact, um, one of the most egregious ones I saw was the, the there was this thing called like the Ryan's World um, Surprise Vault. And it's a like cheap plastic vault that costs between 30 and $50, depending on which version you get, um, that has 30 surprises inside. So it just has random toys that you don't know what they are, um, no idea what the quality is, can't see that in ahead of time, and you just open it, and once it's done, that's it. You throw it in the trash. You, it is cheap plastic. It is literally only there to prey on uh, the sort of addictive, um, like addictive element of opening this thing. It's the, it's literally RL loot boxes, but almost worse because it's doing more damage to the environment. And then I was going to tie this in a little bit with um, just I wanted to throw down from earlier. We were talking about companies that whose business model is more or less either buying up or deliberately setting up fake um, um, uh, fake uh, competition so that they don't get trust busted. Um, look into Oracle. Just take some time and uh, learn a oh, little God. bit about the company Oracle. And you will discover one of the most evil tech companies on the planet. Um, a, a company which regularly buys up innovative product, project, projects and then just basically slits their throat uh, for fun. Um, it's, uh, you know, for profit rather, not for fun. But um, yeah, it's uh, pretty sick. And, and, and this is all because of, again, this is not because the products were bad. This is not because the products weren't innovative. It's because they weren't immediately infinitely profitable so well, some of them weren't even profitable it's because they were good is why they get bought up because yep. they have future value and if you buy them now instead of later you get them cheap and then you can take them apart and then make a profit off that future value yeah yeah to to both of to both of your points i don't know if anybody here watches uh the the hit abc show shark tank i watch every episode I think it's just such a fantastic little um, little capsule of uh, mm -hmm. capitalism. And somehow these capital owners found a way to get paid to do the thing where they prey on people who aren't able to invest in their own good ideas. Right. Oh, yeah. And like you have you have somebody like Kevin O'Leary and he said this on uh, he said this on TV once and I thought it was Burger. so hilarious. And, and Kevin, by the way, just to be clear, Kevin O'Leary is a complete scumbag complete not scumbag. even just in his complete like character on the show in real life complete he is a shit. scumbag but he had said on the on the show at one point uh like some guy i think he was uh presenting like a uh, a lock with a fingerprint reader on it and that ended up being a whole emotional thing for those who remember it but he said to the guy at one point Oh no, don't go do a licensing deal with that company because what that company will do is they're going to they're going to buy the license to your product and they are never going to sell it because the reason if they started to sell it it would make all of their other products obsolete. 
And so they will just sit on your intellectual property for as long as humanly possible. And then when they absolutely have to, then maybe they'll use it. And by that yeah. time, they'll yeah. essentially own it. And that's actually the term that I forgot earlier about um, like um, razors that- Hey, welcome new monster, and, happy to have you. Um, light bulbs that burn out um, is planned obsolescence. And that's how all of these industries work. Yeah. Yeah, it's been uh, a, waffle it's fries been are great. Like I the love 50s, them. Uh, I love US, waffle fries. You know, companies figured out they were really good at building things that like last for a long fries. time, but waffle then they realized fries. they were losing money because these things wouldn't have to be replaced, and that if they built it, you know, cheaper and they could kind of control enough of the market Curly to be able to get too. away with that, that they would do that. This is what the problem is with capitalism. Like anybody, like you know, sometimes we might portray it as like capitalism itself as evil, and there's all this like you know, kind of like, you know, it's it's like dark forces or something like that, but it's not, it's perverse incentives. It's the fact that it, by its very nature, yeah. it sets up a million perverse incentives and people just follow these like kind of unthinkingly, you know, it, it becomes an automatic uh, process. Yeah, you become Pac-Man just gobbling um, up all the little, you know, pellets and you don't think about the larger lines? implication of like leaving pa pellets for the Pac-Man of, uh, Sorry, this is a weird metaphor. Um, speaking of boomer shit, yeah, Pac-Man. Anybody played that? Like the old video games are really hard. I, I I don't like even the Nintendo, even the NAS games are just like absurdly. I, I would not last very long as a gamer in that world. Um, but anyway, uh, I, I, I want to throw one other. I thing. digress. I want to throw one other thing into the mix there really quickly because um, I, I do think it's really important to because like when gamer. we're talking about these gigantic tech companies, it is at the end of the day, a mixture of trust busting and overall policy just on that very limited scope. And I absolutely agree with everybody in terms of like, well, part of the obviously part of the problem is the incentive structures of a capitalist market economy make it difficult to deal with these things in long term ways. And we have to be somewhat reactive. Oh, to they're it really good. Iron Mage. They're really good. What capitalism does. But we've talked about some of the really kind of like macro level issues you know you've got uh monopoly loss, things that already got calm. essentially labeled as utilities you've got unbridled political power in the handful of a, a lot of money of to do that my friend um i want to go down to the ma uh, the micro level for a second because of the way these yeah, things pricey, are now the playing themselves out i think is actually kind of dangerous on our kind of day-to-day -day level uh and not just in terms of well it, it is in terms of advertisements but uh, does anyone remember ADHD, the Alex Dan. Morse saga from a couple weeks ago? No, uh, Alex Alex Morse was uh, a candidate running in the Massachusetts first district. Yes. And yes, uh, I do remember a handful this. of the Massachusetts college Democrats tried to uh, insinuate that he was a sexual predator because he had a Tinder profile. This all got blown out by the intercept. It's a whole saga. I'm not going to go into every detail of it, but long story short, a bunch of people tried to set him up wrongfully. Uh, and I remember a detail from it where an organization based out of Texas, let me look up the name real, uh, an organization named a case for women, which was a Texas based mm. law firm that focuses on hey, massive class action there we lawsuits. Go, Iron Mage. Uh, they ran a block of Facebook advertisements soliciting information from people who had been contacted by uh, Mayor Alex Morse in, quote, a manner widely understood by our generation to indicate intimacy. Uh, the insinuation was that, you know, we're looking for people to stand forward uh, to speak out against this guy's sexual improprieties towards them. Now, they actually ran this ad. They spent about $700 on it, if I remember um, correctly. Yeah. And they targeted uh, they targeted the ad via Facebook it doesn't to women the same from the everyone. ages of also, 18 to 35. Also, I have medication for ADHD, which helps. And that's all they targeted. They A reached lot. about 30,000 people in the uh, Massachusetts 1st District, or I should say 30,000 women in the, the Massachusetts 1st District. Now, the interesting thing about the structure of that mm -hmm. advertisement, who was targeted and the content of that advertisement is that Alex yeah, Morse is a gay man. Me too. I, I'm sorry, but as a gay man, it's very unlikely that women from the ages of 18 to 35 would have been approached by Alex Morse in a sexually uh, combustible way. I don't, I don't know how else to put that. And what the actual play was, was to try to place the seed in people's minds 
that this guy, you know, he's a sicko, he's a freak, he's coming for you. If you don't know any better, he's bad. And that was a way that the Richard Neal campaign or people allied with the Richard Neal campaign Sexual used Facebook, uh, Facebook advertisements to try to manipulate a political outcome. This is and this is the new game of the 21st century. What's also really interesting is that um, just because no one was approached by this Cash for Crash, you have a talent. Doesn't mean that no one would respond to the ads and say that they were approached by him. Um, right? There are people out there who seeing an ad like this would then say to themselves oh i yeah, should respond to it's this. true adhd is is manageable it's hard but oh my god yeah. we just got raided thank you raiders thank you lumi oh my god you've got such good timing best timing ever holy hell everybody Everyone gives loomy really a follow welcome. we love One of my lumi. favorite content creator is somebody that i've learned a lot from yeah, we we love Lumi over here too. Much love. Yeah, most definitely. I I wouldn't have the space that I have if I hadn't like modeled it after Lumi and Lumi's space. Nice. It is Much it is like a Lumi. particularly um particularly snug space. Yes, I was like looking for the word. I was like cozy, comfy, snug. That's the word I'm looking for. And that's yeah. the vibe we're kicking. Oh my god, kicking today in here as I as I kick over my webcam and everything. I've got everything on a um a standing desk, and so anytime I like bring my knee I do up, the medicine I, like, school. Hey, that's my base. Fuck my whole, noob monster. Uh, set up, but yeah, welcome Raiders. Uh, we're talking about breaking up uh, big tech companies. This is kind of like I mean, there's so much here. You know, there, there we're wait. How did we get into old school video games? Oh, oh no, that was just a chat. Never mind. I'm yeah. totally just something changing. about the addictive model of the video game. No comment check is very um, because we talked a lot about the addictive models being put forth in just normal advertising, but especially this new form of both advertisement and content that is being influenced and built through um, like self learning AI systems and neural networks. Yeah, I mean, I, I that's something I can I we we talk about that a lot on my stream. Um, as I mentioned, we talk about gaming and, and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but uh, do good. It's 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 actually really interesting how um, you know a lot of the biggest gaming companies have all adopted the same basic business model for their game, which is these game passes combined with loot boxes combined with traditional microtransactions to the point where developers like are are, are miserable. Not only because they're being worked to death, but also because they have no fucking clue what their content is ever going to be even used for. They might be in this process where they're making something that's like highly, like a like a super detailed like skin for a character that makes a character look totally different and amazing. And that might be locked behind something they have no say in because there's um there's like a a battle pass premium battle pass combo that you have to buy and no one might ever actually see that thing that they put a lot of love and work into yeah this um, is like another form of alienation of labor it sounds thank like. you so much so for the I, dono I monster have worked pretty thank you so very much in the video game industry I'll and i just want to tell two slight details of it uh one is that a lot of like pretty a lot of pretty well-known studios they actually have uh, either contracted or on staff a like uh, psychologist passes. to try to model things in a particular way that will, uh, uh, what's the term? Not maximize, but uh, try try to really um, maximize the amount of money you're going to pay for something. And payers, the or players into yeah, payers. Yeah, right? I, I'm not using the, I'm, my brain's not working right now. But uh, the other story I wanted to tell was I was sitting in, in an so art meeting tip, once, Noob Monster. Really and uh, my job was to sit in on a, on a handful of different teams' meetings every day, go through planning sessions. And I was sitting in in this art meeting, and there's this never, one woman on the team one who's time, a though, great artist, long, long and she had put out a bunch of various character models for uh, the project that They're we were every working season, on. Usually now, and the art director, who himself was a really one time one really good guy, really funny guy, but he was part of that. Uh, part of that system and i remember him looking over her character models and basically just saying very bluntly uh is there a way you could make the boobs bigger um because like the demographic we're going for here like they're they're gonna want that and that was just a normal thing uh, it's great i love the the video game industry it's filled with so many fun stories 
Yeah, it's funny too because I mean, this is a bit of a side note, but the games industry is one of those industries that has um, sort of skirted under the radar of uh, of legislators or even a lot of political commentators taking it seriously because oh, it's just games. Um, but at the end of the day, like there is so much like the abuse in the games industry is rampant, and a lot of it is because of I mean, you have monopolies that are building up like wild i mean i mean everybody knows the ea one right ea the headhunters they've killed 100 different studios but but they're not hardly the only one there's activision blizzard and um and and all of these other like i mean fucking ubisoft even like all of these companies uh epic now with this whole um competing marketplaces using aggressive exclusivity to try and wrench um market share back from another aggressive monopoly it's just wild and it's like a microcosm of what we're talking about in so many ways um, there's a there's a really fantastic article hey, that for the came follow, out Jay Miles. Happy i want to say you. back in 2014 ish something true. like that um and it was talking about <laughs> movie uh movie production specifically but it was mm -hmm. called uh like something like the death of the mid the mid-budget movie and the dynamics that were at play in that specific article are very much at play within the video game industry. So there's a handful of finger quotes, mid-level studios. You think about uh, places like uh, High Moon, Naughty Dog, Bungie. And these are essentially bought and owned by bigger conglomerates at this point in time. Uh, I forget who owns... I forget who owns Bungie now. I think it's Microsoft. Um, and I believe Activision owns High what? Moon. But oh, no, wait, no, wait. Bungie, Bungie bought themselves Bungie back. Bungie is not under. Yeah, they've been uh, from under Microsoft for a few years now, actually. Uh, okay. uh, Bungie was bought by, was or sorry, the, Microsoft bought a lot of Bungie's IP, including the like Halo stuff. And then they made 343 Studios. Um, Bungie was then bought by Activision Blizzard, which is why the battle.net includes Destiny. Um, and then they bought themselves back at, I think, the beginning of this year or the end of last year. So they're, like, the pseudo-independent now, but they're still selling their stuff through the Activision store, I think. It's they very complicated. Either. They don't. But they, the, the, they don't. Destiny 2 has completely migrated to Steam now. Oh, interesting. But... But long story short, the case is very similar to what's happened to movie studios and, and uh, uh, in terms of mid-level or smaller producers being bought up by big ones. And they keep the name because people have – there's the concept yeah, I've the used a couple times here of mind share. People have this idea of a company in their brain where it's like, oh, I like Bungie. They put out this stuff that I like. I like this group or these developers. And some of the same people might still be on board, but they have that – kind of corporate overlord that is basically trying to wring them from uh for as much money and profit as they can yeah 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 that's no true. absolutely and that's that's a lot of what um you know what gets people onto a brand is you know i'm almost gonna say like some kind of a parasocial experience some kind of a association of that brand with good feelings on some level you know whether that's like you remember drinking you know a certain soft drink with your uh you know, parent at a baseball game or, you know, they, they've kind of like, um, essentially they, they, they buy Never give up Cash Crash, seriously. our memories. They, they, they buy I mean, unless our, you really um, don't want to anymore, you know, but warm feelings that the feelings that really more properly should be kind after. of applied to people in our life end up getting applied to like, you know, products. And, and, you know, even I find myself mm -hmm. guilty of it too. When I, when there's certain games that I like and certain game, you know, designers that I like, but you know, yeah, I don't know pre enough about how a sausage to make is right. made to even really be like, yeah, no, it was like this person that, that made that game so good. Like, it's, I, yeah, I wouldn't well, know. Oh, you know, and some this of goes that back is to like... what I was saying. Like, one of the ways we could fight back against this particular set of bad market incentives is consumer education, right? If you you can learn that, like, the reason that you really liked the original Fallout games were that, like this group of people were the ones making it. This person wrote it. This person wrote this. They went off to become Black Isle. They went off to become Obsidian. Now they made like No Man, well, not No Man's Sky was the other one. Anyway, the, you, you follow the actual individual people who are involved in the process. Oh, they the absolutely like, do yours. And then yeah. instead yeah. of buying 
are pre-ordering worse than by instead of pre-ordering fallout 4 because you really enjoyed fallout 1 and 2 when you were a kid you can make like a more wise decision which is to wait until a game is actually out and someone else has played it and you can reference either a stream of that or see a review from someone yeah, you trust world. Yeah, yeah. right oh i like this that is, this is another negative side of um a negative side of the kind of um commodification of um of of like mm, um that's a good nostalgia idea, is Maybe that you know what will happen is that like Ooh. these games will realize that if they have an ip i like doing game with reviews, a built-in so. audience and I've, they don't have to do shit them. for that audience if it's a built-in audience, people are primed to play Kingdom Hearts three. You know what I mean? They, they, I mean, I'm sorry. That's not the best example of like a you know completely shit game that comes from a good series or anything. I was a little unhappy with some of the story arcs, but that's that's okay. But like, um, you know, what, whatever the new game is from from that series that you have good memories. I am of, a gamer. You know, I it, am. There, there's a lot Very of incentive gay. to get Very you mer. to to, to kind Very of sell gamer. that um the 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 goodness of that game out from under it and still you know give you the product. The most famous example of this is like the games that are built off of IPs sorry, that Leon, are like, know you know, big movies or whatever. They tend to suck. There's some exceptions and some people can probably name them. But for the most part, these games aren't meant for the kid to buy because the kid knows better. True. The kid knows that this game sucks. It's for grandma to buy for the kid because the grandma's like, I know you like Harry Potter. Let me buy you the Harry Potter game. And it's like, grandma, please don't buy me the Harry. God damn it, Harry Potter. Thank you, grandma. This is a really great game. I'll play it a lot. Yeah. And so, you know, yeah, it's it's um, just that kind of idea of the IP, like the reputation of the IP taking on its own life and, and, and commanding value that doesn't really isn't merited by the content of the product itself. I have and if you, so if much you look at the gameplay of like, for instance, Harry Potter games, you find that it's this perfect middle ground between just shipping an empty box and a game that's technically playable and won't break any yeah, I think that's laws true, on like a class action lawsuit saying like, look, what you shipped us isn't legally a video game anymore, yeah. right? Like, yeah. yeah, and this is something, um, there are a couple of things I, I wanted to touch on here about this because like, on first of all, the like idea of like this sort of brand loyalty has been like unbelievably hijacked and it, but it comes from a, a, a totally rational place right so like um for example one of the best examples of this in my mind is blizzard um a company which whose games i grew up on like i literally like loved blizzard games and so it's like oh i know this team i know some of the people who are involved i know like you know chris metzen is going to be you know overseeing the writing and i love his writing in other games um and then what happens is that it becomes it, it it no longer represents an actual like an actual studio with vision or whatever or anything like that it doesn't become a a, a um over time it's no longer this um this place or this team that you're following it becomes a, a an image that can be slapped on something to imply the previous glory of whatever that team was and to a certain degree, some of that is inevitable. We can we can't avoid that. Like you know, somebody might start a company and they might pass away or go do something else. But that's usually not the problem that we see um, with a lot of these games companies that have sort of gone bad. Um, in the case of Blizzard, there was a pretty sharp downturn in the quality and the um, and the style of their games around the time that they were um, acquired by Activision. And in fact, now almost all of their senior members are gone and have gone and made another studio. Um, so there's this sort of like thing that's happened on this this goal of just like hyper, uh, like hyper profit seeking um, at any cost. Like, like uh, we just need to make as much money as possible you can't just make a company that's sustainable and puts out a good product. It has to be the most. We have to be a yearly product. All this sort of mentality has made it, has sort of hijacked our natural affinity to like grow familiar with certain things. Um, you know, like for example, you might like a soda and because you like that soda, you want to have it again because you know it's a good one um, when there's all kinds of other options. It's like a sort of natural thing that's been turned into this like horrific um you know, monst like like monstrous force. Um, I, but yeah, I, I do think there is value in differentiating between like when we're when we're talking about. Uh, or uh, have we officially moved on from big tech companies? Are we? Oh, are we done with that? Mm -mm. I saw the topic changed in the Twitch stream. Oh, did it? 
Um, I think that Irene probably just picks what we are talking about. And yeah, you can, uh, as no, as, it's actually you that picks uh, what we're talking about. Yeah, I generally yeah. like, let, like, just let it um, flow to a certain oh, extent. Sure. If we get way off topic, I'll, I'll pull us back. But, uh, yeah. um, so the, so soda, the thing good. you read, I believe, is just Irene being soda. descriptive about where the conversation sure, is. I fucking sure. love WoW, though. But it is uh, true. In terms we're of like what's change. going on with uh, big tech companies, though, I... I think it's interesting to look Excuse at me. who are the main players Slurp. we talk about when we talk about BFA uh, had busting up things, the or trust busting these gigantic firms. We talk about Google. We talk, I talk about, about Facebook. I've talked about it before. Uh, Apple, Amazon. None of them are particularly game companies. Google's got Stadia, which I'm sorry is a joke. Uh, Amazon's got Amazon Game Studios, which who knows what will happen with that. But it's not it's not Oof, never the gaming part and it's not even the retail part. Yeah, it used to it's be It's the underlying True. infrastructure. And so I, I keep bringing up uh, things like Amazon Web Services. Amazon Web Services is better understood as essentially a utility and a, a piece of infrastructure. And they use that to essentially sub they use their control over that particular asset, that public asset that we all use um, as a means to subsidize broader uh, market dominance in other sectors oh, of the he is economy. A bit. I don't have any control. And over Google that. does this side. with uh, search optimization and AdSense. So when you talk about busting up a company like Google, uh, what you're actually talking about is separating things like the search functionality of Google as a corporation from its AdSense. Because when yeah. you pair those two specific things he was together, a, he was fucking and you faking. have, yes, I, I don't know what the exact fish. statistics are, but a vast majority of people using Fraud. Google as a search engine and you couple them with an advertising uh, uh, conglomerate. I don't know if, what you want to call that. Uh, it actually means that they have specific social power to control the flow of advertisements and information in a way that's deleterious to broader market trends. And, this all comes together well, that's in the, thing. the least they don't fun way possible when we're talking about they don't necessarily their, have to make money. Their broader uh, uh, control Not everything over should politics be about and profit. their influence over Some things politics, are useful as a tool. I I hate the Republicans as much as the next guy, but they have a point when they talk about companies like Facebook and Google having an undue influence over pro uh, politics broadly. Oh, uh, we can talk about that um, after. Right, exactly. I'll address that. And I'll put that I, on the notes. We were just going to talk about how, like, or we were talking about how games in the Q and A sell section. us our memories of playing good games instead of selling an individual new good game to us. And in the same way, you can see how political parties and political that'll be an ideologies interesting topic to talk about. end up selling us identity instead of selling us actual things getting done. You could look over on the right, and you can see things like. Um, America as it was in the 50s, the, the picket fences, the happy families, this, this like ideal version of history that never existed but more and was probably, never yeah. like that. Like back oh, then, yeah, for sure, noob. We can talk about that. I would love to talk about family, this stuff. They Video still games, had I love them. jobs where they would go work at I'll a factory. I'll save this on the article. We can talk about this afterwards. They had like no health coverage at all. Like maybe your arm would get chopped off in the giant ass machine that you're working at and then you'd just be fucked but when we make movies about this time period we don't include that part and and, and so that all gets turned into this identity of the past that's sold to the right and then on the left we get sold this identity of being an anti-racist right and so they're able to say look the other side is racist you're an anti-racist you need to be extremely invested in beating them and voting us on the left in the Democrats in America. And and it completely divorces what people are buying, which is this identity from what's being sold. True Rackison. I couldn't agree with you more. To do with the power that they get once they get it. Also for everyone in Twitch like, chat, consider I think you're absolutely right. Chat. I think there's actually one stage that's even a little bit sadder than that. Because when you think about stuff like that, it's like at least there's an underlying ethos to it. It's like, oh, I like the company because they posture in a way where they try to be, you know, they try to uh, say that they're anti-racist or they're anti-sexist or, you know, pro-LGBTQ rights or something. And at the end of the day, they're a company. They're doing what companies do. They, they're trying to make money and uh, putting their bid in with whatever social forces they think will make them the most popular. This The part that I think is deeper and a little bit, always been befuddling to me 
is people who have brand loyalty and build social communities for none other reason than disliking the main competition of another company. And I've been thinking about this a lot recently with like Intel versus AMD. Um, that happens too. I know people who are diehard Intel people. I know people who are diehard AMD people. And at the end of the day, it, it doesn't matter. It's a processor. What, whatever. If you know anything about computers, whatever your workload is, find what's situationally appropriate and price to performance. There you go. Figure that out. It's not that complicated. But you will see people just lose their minds about it. And there's no reason other than, oh, I really don't like other company, which fine, but they're both they're both pretty evil companies if you know anything about the two. Yeah, and I mean, wasn't that sort of the premise that was um the premise of the of the whole console wars in the video gaming thing, right? Was there was an entire generation of of advertisement that was built right around that that was uh, you know, see like fuck not CEOs, but like public facing representatives taking pot shots at the other companies' consoles and and hyping it up it was like almost like a like a re like an a act of wrestling just to like get you onto your team of the xbox team or the playstation team or the nintendo people um but yeah, team Sega. Oh, yeah. when well, were Sega. these console yeah. wars was this like the 90s um yeah. yeah there was a lot of it in the 90s and then in the early 2000s with the like um with with the like around the launch of the xbox 360 and stuff like that there was a, a lot of tension between the xbox 360 and the ps3 i think and they, they yeah, played and it, it up really it, high it's really frustrating because like it is possible if the right minds were put at the problem that we could have set it up so computers are oh, easier to did. use for people it's hard and to then, avoid them like sell specific computers without all of this um like corporate uh intellectual property on them to do the same thing that computer or video games did but without being proprietary, without locking out their um, oppositions, like game cartridges and everything like that. Um, I do think there's like a little bit of value in kind of taking a step back though, where it's like, have you ever met, okay, here's a question. Have any of you, and I suspect the answer is no, but have any of you, and including people in the chat, ever met anybody in your life ever who has had very very strong feelings about uh which cloud computing service that they use like you know we i, I keep talking about aws but like so i don't when, think when anybody knows the cloud other ones. computing service does that include something like onedrive well so Yes, when I have. When you use Twitch, have, you're using but... AWS to access it. It's just not a choice. I've met you don't, Azure um, people. You, but... you don't get a say in the matter. It's just kind of that's a unique the infrastructure. Perspective. Yeah, so when you yeah, watch Netflix, then, no, so when you go do other things. Question. Yeah, yeah, well, that's my point, though, things... is that like, like consumers don't even get a choice in that structure. It's just, okay, this is the structure mm -hmm. of the internet. This is, yeah. and that's where I start, you know, really pounding away at my gavel of look at this like a utility look at this like something to be nationalized brought into the public sphere make it something that is not the sole uh pinging cash yourself in chat how of a corporation that i think we all kind of feel is evil in some capacity well okay i just like to be careful around the word evil because what the the corporations all are is actually worse and it's that they're amoral at least if something is evil you can tell like why it's doing a thing and like predict it or something right if you have an amoral company it will just do things and sometimes it'll look like it's on your side and then it will confuse people who think in terms of good and evil because they'll think it's good right that's why we have this issue with some people getting really strongly behind companies that are pandering with like gay pride advertising uh, that's my say because they think oh look this company is morally good oh, or now. do you mean far bottom used right to be that's me evil but this the reality is that it's always been and always will be amoral because it's a system that's reacting to the inputs it has the yeah the market so yeah. since we we're talking about the the market and bring up the market of ideas which is used often in supporting 
posting things to social media. I know one of the, one of the big topics that yeah, we're going to strike really on is cool. on uh, the panels. idea of suing okay. companies for deplatforming uh, people of having an extreme view and publishing that on these uh, on social media, whatever social media you want. Um, and I've always found it interesting how freely uh, the idea of uh, the the idea of free speech is thrown about when it comes to using a private company that you've agreed to the terms of service of that no one ever reads, but definitely is in there saying that they can ban you from using their services for any, for anything that they desire. Kid and, fighting but in the somehow background. that's been pulled into the conversation about breaking up these monopolies. Yeah. I was actually going to um, touch on that as well. I'm glad you brought that up um, because it, it's funny because, uh, you know, as is typical, uh, the, the, the few times that the, uh, the, the, the American right uh, points out a, a valid issue. They've always got to approach it in the worst possible way, which is this idea of, of like uh, turning all social media platforms into publishers so that they can um, stop an imagined persecution campaign against their own viewpoints. And it's just like, well, there are huge problems with trying to change that, that, uh, structure which would make many websites completely unusable um, YouTube twitch Twitter would be totally unusable if they were treated as a as a publisher because they would have to personally like verify every single user that does that when that's that's wild that's like it, it's just completely ridiculous to even try and approach with that and that's their that's their angle and then they launch from that point say this is why we need to do it and then they back it up and say oh well look at all these monopolies look what they can do which yes there are problems with the monopolies but the solution that you're putting forward would not solve the monopoly well i mean i guess maybe it would by destroying all of those companies outright but it would also leave us with no such tools that we enjoy which i don't know maybe that's Maybe that's in their favor. Maybe like going back into like some sort of uh, era where they can only watch radio or control, and because that's the thing ultimately, right? Is like if they if they're able to push through that, then oh, then you end up with sites that are only curated, which means only people who can afford to or are hired by those companies can possibly get their content out at all. And um, yeah, I don't know. I have to say that's probably I mean, in the favor of people who have money, like the Koch brothers and stuff, right? I do have a certain sympathy to that style of argument, uh, and this this might be a mixture of nostalgia and just general dis. This is my internal boomer mindset, but uh, there's a really good interview with uh, uh, Felix Biederman. I forget what the podcast is called, but it's he's essentially talking about Chapo old versus Travis. new internet. When we were like, when he talks about old internet, he's talking about like the early two thousand, late nineties, early two thousands, when we were all Felix kind of like cool. on our own forums, doing our own thing. The GeoCities, <laughs> the GeoCities, and then you kind of saw this mass like move towards what we now consult, like consider the social media age: MySpace, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube, and it's kind of um, the analogy he used was it was like you took all these kind of disparate factions and threw them all into general population and like a lot of them do not sit well with each other. So you get all these kind of weird outcomes. Um, and I, I have a nostalgia for that kind of old style of internet, but that being said, um, I think there is something oh, of course deeply is. unsettling on that piece craft of like when we talk about, and we should do it again. When we talk about the connection between Twitter or Facebook or, uh, or YouTube or these various social media platforms, it is no longer like uh, it's no longer an era where if you make a mistake online, Aww. it is restricted Ooh. to a mistake online. It actually Yummy, can be monster. really blown out and really actually ruin people's lives and job prospects. Maybe sometimes that's deserved, but I think in a lot of cases that should be kind of an unsettling feeling of like, We've entered a new age of like a kind of panopticon of social You'll media where we all get access to and each other's color. thoughts and feelings on a day to day basis, and there's almost no privacy left. That's a little bit of unsettling. No, that's not true, Peace Christ. At least in some capacity. Well, we've also kind of extended our our we've extended our presence onto the internet. Does everyone love to hear the sound of my uh? My yeah, we can hear you. It's a little loud. <laughs> 
They're really passionate about whatever it is happening. Okay, I love it. Yep, they're they're quite passionate. So uh, we've, you know, the internet has nah, become kind of a necessity. That's and not always the proxy, answer. Peacecraft. We've we put part of ourselves on the internet. Before you could kind of hide that away on your fifty-six k dial-up whenever you're making your your really uh, yeah, basic me. HTML Angel Fire uh, web pages, but now we are so integrated yeah. and so and and so just part of this cyber neural network that it, I mean I feel like it's a valid criticism um, to to look at uh, people's past history of, of what they've done online because if they if they behave like that you know they publicly you know, when, when they're getting interviewed, may not say those same things, but they're still going to have to be around other employees. They're still going to have those same opinions. Mm -hmm. So if they're not cognizant enough to, to know uh, what I love to the say market quietly, one. then maybe they're not a good fit period anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think there's and, some and aspects. Whenever we talk about any new um, technology, you can see how it could draft it could become a dystopia it could become a utopia right when you talk about like a panopticon on the internet where we are able to see everyone's secrets like this is bad if there's going to be material harm that comes to you if you can't hide your secrets but um i actually wrote this down way earlier as an example is vosh um apparently um put his nudes out publicly and pinned them in his Discord server or something. And the reason that secrets are harmful to you is because someone's going to harm you with that secret, right? And, and some secrets, you can get rid of the harm I think Bosch is just right. by letting it be known publicly. Yeah, um, there is. And, and there's a lot of things that we can probably yeah, I think it's on his, uh, not safe for sort of forestall having bad input or outcomes from um, and then the other things are just like, if society was better, you wouldn't have to keep it a secret that you're gay or whatever. Yeah. Um, so a couple things I wanted to touch on here. One is like, I think that a certain degree of the like de-anonymizing of the internet is um, like just a inevitable conclusion of it becoming more of a part of our lives. Um, Definitely agree with that, by the way. Yeah. Like, like, like we, 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 do more with the internet now than we used to. So it's natural that there's going to be some de-anonymization. I mean, after all, um, there's stuff you can do in real life that hides your identity and you can put on a mask and go after a bank or something like that. You know what I mean? But like um, the reality is that a lot of what we do inevitably exposes who we are. Um, and I think that that's not necessarily a bad thing. I do. I will say though, I think that there is a, a um, sort of like a, a streak of of this sort of old internet mentality um that people talk about a lot and we've actually been talking about this has come up on my stream a couple times recently because people have been talking about it but i actually think this is sort of there's a part of that that's sort of starting to come back and the best example i always point to this is my favorite form of social media discord discord is about the closest thing you can get to a 2020 version of a forum um, or of a, of a site that hosts forums. Everybody's got their own one and you join a whole bunch that you might have shared interests. Some of them are based around a person. Some of them are based around an interest. Some of them are based around a company. There's all kinds of varieties of them. And it's a, you have a lot more control over what communities you belong to, who can see your stuff, who you're talking to and who you're hanging out with. And the people who run them have as much control as they want um, with a few exceptions. Obviously there are some discord like universal to terms of service don't organize violence on there stuff like that but by and large um they really do serve as and and they're more so i feel like they're more um they're a little more towards that sort of like uh what's the right word i don't know democratized isn't quite the right word but maybe it's that um version of the of the web that we used to see because um because there's there's so many individual versions and basically all that discord does is is build a framework for everyone to use um whereas something like twitter while you do have a twitter page you're pretty restricted by how twitter uses your information how they present it to other people whereas discord actually allows you to decide how you present that information you can have private channels there's a lot of customization options that you don't have with twitter or facebook or a lot of these other platforms um and i i think that there's some um 
some trends going in that direction. And, and I mean, hell, um, while we can't quite claim that like streaming or video making is at that point, because ultimately at the end of the day, everybody relies on either YouTube, Twitch, or DLive or one of these other like, like things like that, these like strange third party ones. Um, like, uh, we do see people seeking out and having some success with their own websites that host their own chat that allow them to have more control of it. I mean, I know I'm kind of doing the self plug here about my own thing, but it's been an incredibly wonderful experience specifically mm -hmm. because it's given me more control to decide what is a, what, you know, what I can moderate here, how I can control who's coming in and out, how they interact with the other people in my community. And people can come and go to the website as they desire and enjoy the site for that reason. So I think that there is some streak of that that's coming back. And that is why at the end of the day, um, I guess we're here talking about monopolies, right? Because a lot of monopolies yeah. are driven to sort of stop that sort of thing that does naturally occur. People mm -hmm. aren't, um, I, I think there's a part of like, I've heard this a lot, a sentiment over the last few years. It's like, ah, people just want, they're just lazy and they just want the lowest level of convenience. I've heard this thrown about, about why people use steam and stuff like that. And well, that's just a true fact. Like everyone always wants the most convenient thing. That's good. True. That's, yeah, that's, that's true to a degree. But I also think mm -hmm. that like people aren't um like like dumb. You know what I um, mean? Like yep. by and large, like I I think there's some things that people aren't like amazingly informed on everything. But like at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if they have options, they'll choose them. It's just there's no other options besides Steam and 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 stuff like that. Yeah. So. But it, so it, it, I, it's I, also that um people are misinformed on how important it is not to be misinformed. Um, I think that once a person starts to understand corrosive effects of the markets in some specific place, and, and, and you'll find out because, like, maybe a friend gets addicted to porn or video games or gets addicted to social media or someone gets fired because social media or because, like, there's all these ways. And then someone suddenly realizes, like, Oh, all of these companies are trying to screw me over constantly in all places Listen, in my life. Streaming is and good. then that person just sort of becomes I'm addicted radicalized to streaming and, and streamers too. paying attention what to what living. they do and acting yeah. deliberately in the future. I uh, I agree with like th there there's a weird thing going on for for myself personally because I do understand that part of the case that I'm making is and there's an element of nostalgia to it. And there's something of like, maybe that world's just not coming back and, you know, got to accept that at some point. I love Vermin. where there is AKA on the flip hyena. side. I, I think love them. where I agree with a lot of what you're saying, Demon Mama, where I do start to like get into this is this idea of like the Internet or at least social media as it exists today. One is like basically controlled by four or five major corporations in some capacity. And two that if you uh, using again that metaphor of like okay now the internet is uh, social media is just Doing gen pop mom. we're mixed in with everybody That's else whether nice, we like it or not we don't know the ages we don't know the demographics we don't know who we're going to be talking to or who's going to come across something that we say or do um it gets a little troublesome because you start thinking about like you know you see people calling out teenagers for doing you know, dumb, oh, yeah. dumb shit. Been seeing a lot of that lately. Yeah. And um, we let Uja shout themselves out. And they have to go. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I yeah. noticed yeah. that. Uh, we, Ouija, um, give yourself a shout out. Uh, let us, let people know where you can find them. You got a, a Twitter at least, right? So uh, I got, a, I got a Twitter, um, anti Stan, uh, 10, I think is, is the username. And, uh, you can follow me on there. I shit post. I, leave a lot of comments and Oof. I engage in, in some light debate. Um, I'm actually might be planning a, a YouTube uh, channel here coming up. Nice. But yeah. But regardless, so um, I really appreciate being, being on here and engaging with, with such a diverse uh, group of uh, schools of thought. And so I really look forward um, to kind of following up on this and, and watching more streams. I'll make nice. sure to check out everyone else, uh, including demon mama. But anyway, y'all take care. Absolutely. Nice meeting you, Loved bud. having you here. Yeah, it was great talking with you. Uh, yeah, just to finish that thought pretty quickly, like, you see, like, teenagers do dumb, you could even say, you know, bad or, or, or horrible shit online. Um, and I always, like, get a, a weird 
twinge of like uncomfortableness when I see people trying to make a, a huge deal about it online. I agree, Simp. Because a lot of these people are like, oh, well, to be to be very frank and blunt about it, they're young, they're dumb, and uh, they don't know. And any they're better. full of communism. Oh my god, sorry. <laughs> no, they just don't know any better, and it's I like it's don't. like okay, what do we, what do we do at that point? Do we now have like? Uh, a home ec class for internet usage where it's like you know don't tie Wait, your so, don't tie your name yes, to your personal name yes, and absolutely <laughs> um we like i've been yeah. on entire panels about how we need to restructure the entire school system right because it is not teaching you how to think and how to survive in a system it is teaching you how to operate like you're at work right yeah it, it, how to it, obey it, it's how to obey. It's how to fuck do homework. Work, where it's like homework is given bullshit. A task. Can you accomplish this task? Bullshit. According Anti -homework. to rules given to you by a boss or other authority figure, right? The school should, from bottom to top, be about teaching people how to think, how to learn, how to go about um, existing in various spaces safely, right? Te teaching people basic economic principles um a friend of mine has you know lived beneath their means for long enough to accumulate enough capital to invest it all into a thing that will return back to them the amount of money it takes to survive for a month each month like this is an idea that every child coming out of school should have learned from economic theory right people should know oh i don't need to like go buy a house when i grow up what i need to do is have the correct amount of capital invested correctly so that each month i'm earning the amount of money it or amount of profit or um returns that will let me pay the cost of surviving that month it 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 is like far more effective and yet it's not an idea i've encountered until just recently and I do think, for the record, that, like, some sort of um, internet literacy classes would be an incredible. Like, it's a huge part of our lives, and we just haven't adjusted to that in a lot of cases. Yeah. I mean, the funny thing is, we had, like, computer lab classes that taught us the basics. And, <laughs> and, and here's the thing. Even at that time, they were a little outdated, but they were nonetheless incredibly helpful. Um, like, learning how to be able to navigate a, a fucking word processor, or knowing the basics of how to use a computer, or get on the internet. Those no, things, like as this. cringy as they are, are really good. And we should have that for social media, in my opinion. Um, yeah. But... Well, just really, just like really the, quickly. The movie Cuties very poorly brings up, like, there's a huge problem with just letting people have access to social media without mm. teaching them about all the dangers that exist associated with them. And our consumer just really quickly, it. because it's a, it's a funny story and th I'm not, I'm not like really taking a shot or anything, demon mama, but uh, I went to a charter high school and had to learn how to use a word processor there. And our final for learning how to use a word processor was to uh, write to Ar uh, governor Arnold Schwarzenegger at the time about the need for increased funding for charter schools. <laughs> Yikes. Charter schools. I, I thought that was folks, going one but that's direction. Totally, and it another went... story is another, another time. I mean, and, and to, to build off of that, like, uh, like I also had a class in high school that was taught by someone who the way that she graded oh. was by laying papers over one another over the master copy of what you were supposed to be typing to as if it was a typewriter. And then she would just mark anywhere where she would put a light behind it and mark anywhere where the lines were, where the words didn't line up. I'm not kidding you. So it's like, sometimes they are out of, they're out of date, but nonetheless, learning how to type is still useful. Learning some things about the computer is useful, but, but yes, uh, Maybe I, would, no, no, I, that. I had a class project yes. in grade eight where our class made the school's official website. Like, mm. yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Oh, no, wait, sorry. did you guys, wait, did you guys, like, does anyone use that home row method shit? Yes. I learned wait, that. I kind of do. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put your, uh, you put your index fingers on the F and the J because you can feel those. And then you got yourself on home row and you stay, you know, go up or you go down or that one. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, don't I have use like... that. And I wish I did because when I had that class, I was supposed to teach us how to do home row. I just cheated and looked at my hands while I typed and to today of course, I should. typed slower than I could if I had learned it properly 
Yeah, my typing is fucking lightning fast for that reason, and I will always appreciate the amount of home robe um, uh, teaching that I had because I can type so motherfucking fast. Um, it's it's actually awesome. Yeah. Note to <laughs> I, self. Note to self. Don't get in a Twitter argument with Demon Mama. Yeah, I'll outtype you. Yeah. I'm Discord gonna either. Six Imagine before I even yeah. Holy shit. Yep. I could. If you if you ever anybody ah. if you want to settle it out. I'll settle it out on a typing game. On Give me typing in the dead yeah, or something. We'll go. fucking go Just at it. Who gets the best score in Mario? <laughs> typing. I was still thinking that when, <laughs> when, we, when we were talking about like you know internet literacy class for kids, I imagined H three H three coming into your classroom and teaching you about like just general like online shit. You know, up here's you know how not to get docs. Here's Nah, dude, I mean, it's not gonna be listen. that. He's gonna, it's gonna be some synergy shit. His, his the things he's gonna use for his lessons are his own videos and podcast shit, right? So you know, dude, look, be, look, yeah. at this, look at this cringy fuck. You want to be him? Nah, you don't want to be him. So here's we're gonna go over why uh, how you don't be him. It, like fucking how not Hacker to man. be cringe units <laughs> one two three. I want to be the class that gets all gas no breaks though. That's that's who I want to teach me. <laughs> The, you you have a oh god damn it after biology I gotta go to anti cringe 101 how to avoid cringe Talk 101 by Natalie Wynn yeah, yeah, yeah there first you go. Step, step one do not be a cat girl yeah. cat girls are cringe not to me um, I wait, welcome wait. all cat cringe girls cringe is based is the real position mm. when you call someone cringe what you're saying is you're liking something and it makes you look sort of not cool and like the answer to that is who cares well when who i usually cares? use cringe i'm usually to be fair i'm usually referring to a republican politician that's <laughs> my most frequent use of cringe um i do say very frequently Spencer. though as my chat will tell you life is cringe to cringe is to live so you you actually it, it's important to embrace a certain level of cringe um but there are flavors of cringe and the type of <laughs> flavors of cringe that we don't like is uh like Donald Trump uh, wheezing out a a dictatorial fascistic speech on the you know on the the the, the balcony of the White House sort of, but this type of cringe is is perfectly fine. The Kingdom Hearts poster having type of cringe, we welcome that. <laughs> I just had one of those. My cat broke it. Aww. Yeah, it happens. Mm. What's it like a wall scroll? Because that's what this this one's like a wall scroll. Yeah. Which yeah, game? Wait, this one is the original. This one's a classic. I've had oh, this thing for one. so long. Yeah. Yep. Nice. I think it even has. A... Yes, it does. It has a teaser written, carved into the stone. It has the uh, the deep dive. It's hard to see from here, but right up about there, it says deep dive, which was the uh, the secret ending. So whoever made this poster was like, oh, I really know. You found the secret ending Wait. for getting all the. I think I've played that one. I don't. I definitely didn't find any secret endings. Yeah, like, I guess you didn't get all the I Dalmatians. Really then little... should have gotten all one hundred and one Dalmatians. Damn. Was it on the PS two? Yep. It's on. Isn't that deep dive ending is in every um, version of the game? Yep. Yeah. It's in I, all of no, them. I just never. I was a kid, so like I, I never fit, got the you know the good ending. You know, I never knew about that stuff. I was like. Yeah, you yeah. have to do a certain level of completion. I can't remember all of the parameters. I know you have to get all the uh, Dalmatians and and all that. Um, and there's some sort of thing you have to all, do. All the three spots and everything. But the, seriously, I remember like the three. What were the trilogy or whatever that was called? Trinities. You got yeah, the Trinities. Gotta, yeah. As far as I know, to get the deep dive, you got to do the what is it? You got to do the Trinities, and the Dalmatians. And it was amazing when I was when I was when I first played that and got the deep dive ending. I was like. You what? What? Yeah, it was like one of those moments where I was like losing my absolute shit as a kid. I was just like, oh, oh my god, there's a, a, another cutscene hidden at the end of the game. It's amazing. No, I would have lost my shit too. Oh my god. Oh my god, secret endings and shit, are, this shit like that are like alternate things. Are gonna be so ruined for kids. They all grew up on that Marvel shit where there's always another fucking cutscene after every credit scene. Oof. Like, oh, they used to mean so much to us. Now we have to hide them elsewhere. The future of, of gamers have to predict that the Zoomers will wait till after the credits and give them a give them a bonus for skipping the credits or something like that. <laughs> Holy nice. shit. Yeah, so, yeah. Wait, wait, okay, no, it is actually really cool that they have cutscenes after the credit. Like, um, 
one, watching a whole screen of credits goes to help people remember that there's actually lots and lots of individual laborers who are contributing to make a movie. And it's not just this entity called Disney that should be making money off it. Actually, all of those names that scroll by forever and ever and ever, all of those people deserve to make like a good wage for the work they put forth, right? And also knowing that people are going to actually stick around and watch um, the, the credits, companies will make more interesting credits where things are actually happening. And then you get to watch a little bonus part of the movie. Like it's actually win, win, win if you think about it. Well, I would, I, I would say that the now, – now this is me reaching back into my film school brain – but uh, the switch from credits at the beginning to credits at the end is largely the uh, the fault of people no longer uh, ever sitting through the credits. If you put the credits at the beginning of a movie, they have to. They got to sit there. And you can make it a cool intro. You can have cool music that hypes you up for the film or whatever. That's the best Or one of those like little cartoon like intros where it's like the movie's not even a cartoon, but it's like the, the intro is somehow. Yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a Pixar used to do that sort of thing. But yeah. I love how Capitan remembers us remembers us idiots uh, working hard. Oh wow, I didn't know you did that, uh, Pauls. Uh, oh yeah, sometimes that's true. You uh, legally have to put them at the beginning and the end, like a license plate, kind of. Okay, in some states. Yeah, I think there yeah. are creative ways to do credits that are that are more fun. Um, yeah, man. Like in Don't Make Me Three, you fight through through the credits. Yeah, That's and cool. same thing in Smash Bros. In Smash Bros, you got that. Wait, were uh, you saying Bayonetta? You fight through the credits, or which game? The Make My Three. DMC. Oh, your your audio got weird right when you said the name of the game. I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Yeah, they Devil used May to do that. Devil May Cry Three. Devil May Cry. Oh, okay, okay. Sick. Yeah, I think uh, I think some other games like probably were inspired by that. I've seen I've seen that in other. Yeah, Near Automata. Uh, uh, I never pronounced this right. Automata. Automata uh, makes you fight automata, the credits automata. themselves. Star Fox 64. Oh, yeah, that's Fox the one with the barrel one, yeah. rolls. The barrel rolls. Do a barrel roll. Hey, everyone. So uh, I've got to get back to some things. I got to jump for the evening, but it was a pleasure yeah, talking to everybody. We are kind of uh, coming up to the four o'clock hour, and I'm going to. Uh, probably raid out at this time. Uh, Kenny, do you want to do our uh, do do your promo for your stuff uh, first, and then we'll go around the horn with everybody Remember, one more time. Stick around. Streams not yeah, over. Uh, We're gonna do Q and A, some memes and Check stuff it after out. this. It's on Twitch. It's good, folks. It's good. Well, last last night's theory stream wasn't good. I want to redo that one, but generally speaking, it's good. That was a that was a theory, my theory streams are hard to get oh, right. That's really for cool. Sure. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, for that. our Monday show is no, fantastic. Check it's out not Post over. Post Revolution. Follow me on Twitter. Sim, uh, it was no. a blast, everyone. Have fun. Have a good one. Most definitely. Yeah, no, check out Kenny and the rest of the um, crew over at Post Post Revolution. Uh, Mabasai. I'm doing it again. Mabasai. I'm doing the Mako Sa thing. Like, okay, Mabasai. There you go. Mabasai. This How's is the credits going? of the panel. It's true. Um, true. Pretty good, except oh, for that. I see. You're uh, ditching out on me, Urist. All right. Name into like Japanese pronunciation for some reason. It must be a weeb thing. You just have to get practice with whoever's name it is, right? I Arm have plenty Kai, of practice. Oh my god, no, say, no, no, no. I have right? uh, Mabasai. We we work together so much, and I still fuck your name up. That's why it breaks my breaks my heart. I well, so the issue is perfect okay. practice makes perfect. It, if you're practicing, but it's imperfect practice, I'll it ask. actually oh. just for yeah, you I did a lot of imperfect practice yeah. into your brain, and hey, it actually like yeah, yeah, it makes the mental model of doing it wrong each time. Hey, hey, yeah. Catherine, my my chat is asking, will you show your cats? My chat really <gasps> wants to see your cats. Cats I will show my cats. Yeah, bring them, but bring them in out. Well, change for doing this. I'm going to say to you, Demon Mama that, hey, I do art commissions. I actually mm. charge um, $30 for per emote to non-partnered streamers and 50 per emote to partnered streamers. I hear you've got a new website that has an infinite capacity for emotes. Um, so that might be really interesting. But yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll bring... well, thank you for that. I, I yeah. won't move my cats. I'll move you guys over towards 
Yay! It's cats. all about the kittens. It's all about the kittens. Cats, 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 cats. Can't stop the kittens. Look at them. That's true. They're it's so true. cute. Yeah, you can fight the panelists. Get up no here. Stopping. Get there in here. No I'll debate any of you. Kittens. Yay, Aww. kitties. I, I Thank love you. Oh, yeah, they do it. It's doing it the thing when they open their eyes real wide. Oh, and they're like, oh, they're Lots so fucking cute. Yes, yes. Kitties are so good. Good kitties. <laughs> yeah, I could Super see Catherine. I don't know how here. Catherine's art style, yeah, if the art style match up, but I'd definitely be into it. If you are in my chat, you can, subs you can um, subscribe to get double channel points. Ooh. And then use 5,000 channel points to make me go pet the kitty. <gasps> Subscribe um, to the kittens. It's, it's the number one channel point usage so far. Demon Mama. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, thanks for having me on. It was a fantastic conversation. Um, really enjoyed it. Um, afterwards, I'm going to be doing a Q&A session, and we're going to watch a couple of videos. We discovered some interesting videos on YouTube, so we're going to be going over them and reacting to them, in addition to doing our usual Q&A session that I do after every panel. So make sure you stick around. If you want to come hang out with me, uh, come on over to demonmama.com forward slash live. You can sign in with Twitch. Super easy. We would love to have you. We have lots of cool emotes. Um, so yeah, um, thanks for having me on, and uh, hope to see you all soon. Thanks for being here as always. Everybody, uh, yeah, go follow Demon Mama. And oh, yeah. and um, I'm actually hopefully going to be getting my own website from White Nervosa. Ooh, um, nice! That is so I was, cool. <laughs> I was meant to go through it with her yesterday, but I ended up forgetting about it. You've got to let but me I'll know. Um, QTCrew.info um, is going to be my website. And nice. yeah, hopefully I'll just be um, putting together pretty much the exact same thing that like the Bob one and only me and now demon mama you've got to let me know how that works out i'm really curious about yours oh, and demon okay. mama's uh websites especially especially when i realize how destructive a bot attack um can be hopefully folks will get that worried worked out um if not uh hey, you know that's till good, then though. till i debot myself you, noob monster. i might have to stream on youtube a little bit but we'll we'll make it work out i need to start my gaming channel on there anyway so um, yeah, um, Catherine, is there anything yeah, else that you wanted to say about yourself oh. or your kittens and where you, we can find you? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, you can find me for the moment at twitch.tv slash Catherine Dominates or over at Twitter, um, Cat Dominates. Um, you can find me this Sunday at 7.30 p.m. doing Supreme Domination. I'm trying to do my own spin of the Raj Royale, where I get, you know, eight of my friends to come on, argue with each other, and figure out which of them is just the best. And then whoever it is, me. Um, I'm going to draw an adorable little doll of them, and then they'll go up on my stream layout for the week um, in the number That's one really dominator cool. position. Um, yeah, it's, it should actually be incredibly, incredibly fun. Nice, nice. All right, so chat, here's the deal. We're going to raid out to, oh my God, it's so hard to decide. Um, I got to I gotta pay back some favors though, that somebody's done me a real solid and I never get to raid them. They're actually, uh, they're actually streaming right now. So let's make sure to hit them up while we can and let them know they are appreciated. Um, I'm going to be back tonight for some more gaming uh, stream and then I'm going to be doing some more on Saturday. I always say early, but it always ends up late somehow. Um, and look for uh, more view YouTube uh, videos coming out. Doesn't no, still need to go? Sorry? Mabasai, do you need to do it? You, didn't you do your promo or no? Uh, I'm sorry, I just wanted to make sure. Oh, somebody did we miss somebody's promo? Yourself? Wait. Did I we think do we missed Mabasai, right? stood up? Okay, Irene, well, did you promo yourself to that's our what I'm audience? Uh, wait, am I fucking muted? Oh, no, no, no yeah, can, that's, that's what I was you. doing. I was like, wait, did, did okay. people hear me? Yeah, that's a pro this is a promo, just so you know. Like, it's not just... But yeah, I'll be back on um, tonight, um, you know, every week uh, here, 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we I do thought Bird Brains, go. and uh, oh, yeah, I'll be back for a gaming stream uh, for sure uh, later tonight. So uh, look for that. And it might be I'm on YouTube, too. though. Uh, okay. Check the, Don't the, worry about the it. Twitter is the best place uh, to uh, to find me and, and to know what I'm doing. I usually update to that. Oh, saving that. Let's do this one more time. One little Discord. 
for everybody who's not in the Discord yet, there it is. There's your Discord. Oh, did Get they go there. first? Maybe I'm uh, Yeah, maybe everybody I'm go follow Mopasai. Everybody go follow Demon Mama. Everybody go follow Catherine Dominates. And now uh, we are going to raid... I never get to pay um, Lance back for all the raids that Lance. Uh, no, that's so. Uh, let's try. Let's try a different one. Uh, raid. Yeah. Bye, so everyone. Like, the only time I ever get to. Boop. All right. We're gonna pop out of here. Bloop. Okay, it actually worked. Bloop. It actually worked. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I know. I'm never.